together, they follow the same curvature. Mm -hmm. I don't have one sitting like that. The curvature is the same. I start at the same point at the bottom. They follow over the top in the same way. And they end at the tips in the same point. Okay. Now this will become clearer when you talk about mallard. Because then you go three ways with, with curvature. So, okay. So I've wet it. Blown it out a little bit. We'll put this aside and I'll show you how to get that to look normal again. Sorry, just on that one. So you're saying it's going to pay you to take your tip it. Strip it. Yeah. Match ten Stand feathers together. Yeah. Exactly. And throw Prep. the rest away. No. Yeah, exactly. Or. No, 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 no. no you, you can use the tippets, you can use the whole lot. No, you can use there's, the whole I don't, think, there's, I don't think I've thrown any tippets away. But All but of them are usable. But you, yeah. the thing is, okay, so this is the main thing. And this this is the thing that people who start don't is the prep. Everyone wants to just tie the fly. So they just take any two tippets that more or less work and put them on. But, but the problem is, and that's problematic because if you don't get it right, it affects the rest of the fly. Mm. So the majority of this stuff, like for me personally, is this kind of thing. The tying is the easy part. It's this sort of stuff that takes time is prepping the stuff properly and making sure. It's, and once you've done that, the rest becomes easier. Okay, so <coughs> when, when I strip when I strip dead, what I do is I, I put them in more or less size size bands. You can oh. from from this you can see that they're close. You know they're lying on the desk. That one obviously will not marry or will not pair with this one. That's obvious. Yeah, okay. So I put those that I think pair with each other. I put them together. Okay, so that that's the first step of sorting. Then when I've got what I think is pairs, you can see this is a beautiful, this is a stunning pair. You've got a very definite left and a right. You see that there's there's yeah. very very strong curves. So there's there's a very definite left and right. But if you wet these, you can see it even clearer through the direction of the of the black bands. Can you see that? Can you do it? Yep. So the black band, this way, that way, and it's easy to see that they are, you know, that the angles, that angle and this angle are the same angles, opposite angles if you want to rather. It's, when, when, when you pull them together like this, it's, it's fairly easy to see it. Okay. Now length, they're exactly the same length. Curvature. So the rake is follow. The angles are the same. You look at it from from the front. One doesn't want to push the other one over. This slide, that slide at the top where you get that little bit of a hollow, that's just because of the way that I've wet them and put them together. But there's no pushing to a side. They're straight. Okay. So I know that's a pair. So I will stable the. I will put them together. Well, them aside and then when they dry up I'll staple them we'll show you in a second how to get those to look good again. So and that's you just staple them together with a staple. Okay. Just put the name. Planking. One of those Planky. small just yeah, the one, of those, one of those little those small mm. staples. It works for me. Mm. It, it, it works for me. Some people some people sellotape them. I hate the sellotape thing. dead straight. See that? Yeah. Dead straight. Okay. Dead simple. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's a hell of a lot of feathers on there. I mean there's one, two, three, four, five, six at the top. There's six, seven pairs of feathers. Absolutely dead straight. Thin married it, it, it works. On McCaw, for example, 
if you don't have an absolutely perfectly matched pair, I guarantee you these McCaw coverts, I guarantee you will have this. Guaranteed. The problem is, if you continue with that, now, I, now I'm putting the woodock on it, the, the woodock, the woodock, I'm putting the cheeks on it. Now, that's a, the woodock wants to sit this way maybe, and the wing is just going this way. So you've already got something that's blown up. Now on top of that, you put the Indian crow, and that wants to push back, and it's just all over the place. If you do not start properly, and it, it, it starts with a underbody. If you do not start properly, it, it just compounds. Because these things, with these flies, every single thread layer that you wrap makes a difference to bulk. Every single feather that you put on makes a difference to angles, to, to wing positions, to these kind of things. So, putting in the, it, not, okay, well, we looked at, you looked at the top, look at the bottom. The, the J. See that? Dead straight. You actually send it around. It's dead straight. And if you do it this way, what you said, you know, you're preening the fly and you're getting it right for the photo. Mm. And then, you know, that happens against the bench. And it, yeah. it's because you're not married. It's, not, it's because you're not matched. If you are matched, the feathers work against each other, mm. but in perfect harmony. So they push. The, the feather tips and everything will be pushing against each other, mm. forcing them to stay together. The moment you've got this kind of thing, you bump it, yeah. it it's, it's just not stable. But, but I mean, uh, you know, goose or turkey, swan, something like that. I mean, it, you just have to do that and it marries and it sticks. With the tippet, Jeez, once yeah, those tippet, fibers come apart, they come apart. But yeah. the, but but that's where you have to do it. You do it once, and you do it right. Mm. If you've got them, cool. if you've got them yeah. matched, mm -hmm. they hold each other. Right. So if we, uh, you can use single feathers. Okay, it's possible. There's a bit of busted. It's only one feather. But left and right is equal enough. Or is equal. You can see if you look over over the top of it, the curves are more or less the same. Not more or less. The curve is the same over the top of the feather. It's not doing this or doing that. Or the curve is the same. The barb length is very similar. It's the same. This side is slightly longer, but that's that can work. That you can handle. So you can use a single feather. But if this feathers, if this feathers rachis was doing this, forget about it. Yeah. Or, you know, often you often on Turkey you find I cannot tie a single fly. I cannot tie a fly with a single feather on this. The difference between that and this side is so big that if I were to put this against that, inevitable, this side will push it over. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's why there's a left and a right. That side matches that side. That side matches that side. So when I'm tying a fit, when I'm tying a fly, I will use barbs from this side and from that side, or I will be using barbs from this side and that side. And that way, I know that when I've got the when I've got the wing set set down like this, they the one is not going to push over the other. They're not fighting each other. They're not fighting each other. If if you're getting to that situation. Do over. Don't do not try and get away with it. You're gonna, you are going to frustrate yourself out of the market. And that's why decent materials, quality materials, are so important. Um, I've um, when I started out, you know, I picked up every feather that I could find, and I bought turkey there, here and there and wherever, and I threw most of the stuff away. Because if you have not tied these flies, you have got no idea what it means to marry, to match feathers. You. If you've tied trout flies all your life, you have got no idea how to match a feather. I promise you that. Because you use, I mean, I've got the marabou and everything. You know, you just pull a few fibers of a marabou and there you go. You've got the tail and everything else. It doesn't work with these flies. You have to have a left and a right. It is, it's absolutely critical. You must have a left and a right. Um, so, anyways. Um, and the same goes, you know, the horns. The horns comes off two sides of a fly, uh, of a feather. Mm. Um, center tails, 
you can use them as these are these are center tiles so I can use the one that I think this is what I sent you guys as well you can use the left and the right or for center tile because they're the same you can see the curvature is the same you can see the length is the same so if you look at that and there's only one center tail in the center yeah center there's tail. one center tail on the bird okay so there's there's a horn from this side and a horn from that side and when i put them together where the horns is also important when you put them together they're not going to push the wing over or they're not they, they will follow the same line and they will meet at the same place if you don't do that this horn can actually push your feather out of whack it is that sensitive when it comes to matching okay all right so matching feathers very 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 important um and it goes it goes for everything in this here you go there's some full feather there's some full feather wings that i still want to tie um cory bastard good example of feather strength or, or how feathers oppose each other okay, so there's two feathers that's fairly similar one is a little bit shorter than the other one but in terms of size and shape and everything they do look the same uh, look over the top yeah, they've got more or less the same curvature so when I'm looking at it like this and we will get to that on the mallard when I'm looking when I'm looking like I'm, I need to get to the hand on this so when I'm looking at, when I'm pairing feathers, matching feathers, look over the top, I look at that angle, that slope, I look at that slope, and I look at the sweep. This, this, yeah, the sweep is probably a good word. So you hold them, I hold them away from you like this, I angle them over the top, and they look fairly similar. But I can tell you, this one is going to be stronger than this one, because it's got a very, very slight extra bulge on the top here so if I put these two together I want to use them as a as an as a single feather wing I'll be tying them in in on that spot and you see it's curving hmm. Yo. oh yeah nice one. yeah but you look at them and they similar they don't look unmatched and even and I, I, I'm going to send it around and take it take it and look over the tops you know look at the angles they, they're very similar very very similar but they are not a matched pair and you can see it because this side is the stronger side now it fights the other feather it's immediately pushed over and this is trouble try and tie and <laughs> try and tie a fly with that you put on the cheek on this side and it sits nice and tight and you put a cheek on that side and it goes off the wing. You try and put a topping over the top of that. The, the tip of that of that wing is just off to the side. The topping doesn't want to fall over. It all starts with that. So send it around and you know, so everything. You everything can actually is, see it when you look at it like this though. You can. You can see that don't know. You can. Okay. It, but it's, it's it's often a lot more subtle than that. Everything looks perfect, and then you put them together, and it just goes. Pfft. So you, oh, you'll see. Well, this pair of scory busted feathers out the back. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. there again, a matched pair. <laughs> um, so everything is either a matched pair or a center tail. <coughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't fuss around with. I try not fuss around with stuff that's not matched. Jay, what is this stuff? Jay, stuff. Yeah. Smell you use mothballs. Hmm? I smell you use mothballs. Yeah, you have to. Ah, this, oh. this is what I see. Yeah, this is some crap that I got from, from somewhere. Yeah. So it just keeps all the hookhorse out of there. Banksy. That's the, I, I sent you guys Banksy and Sub. Mm -hmm. That female, which I do have here somewhere as well. That red is the male, and then there's the yellow tailed Banksy as well. Jesus, you got Banksy? Yeah. yeah. Is <laughs> that from MC Thanks. or where no. do you get your hands on this? Oh no, this would be like from a private dude. There's some decent Florican. You can see everything is matched. Everything is matched. This is Florican. Yeah, there's Florican. Florican busted. 
it's very much it's it's a lot softer than curry. It's a lot like goose actually. Mm. Marries well, marries well with goose. From what country is it originally from? Florican from the Arab somewhere, mm. from the east, Middle East, I believe. Uh, uh, bread. Bread. Oh, I think it's going well. Uh, yeah, these are there's actually three pairs. Readily of available from John, by the way. Yeah, very and much. Dyed, John from and yeah. dyed Florican as well. He does it in mm. colours. Sure. That's the the sub that I the guys that took the natural wing. It's the sub for this one. This is the actual real material, and the sub is better than it. Um, out of the real one, you get absolutely minimal flies. Um, they are, it's a, it's a very common bird in Australia and they poison them, but the feathers are non-obtainable, you cannot get. Unless you've got friends in Australia. Unless you've got friends in Australia. No, they're really and There's their yellow tail. So, you can see it's all matched pairs. Yes. Everything is matched. Guess we'll so all be doing a lot of, lot more traveling. <laughs> so get the, my advice is... Spend some time, play with feathers. You'll be amazed at what you find and see as well. You don't, look, you don't need to buy all of these no, things. No, no, no. This is what you've got to realize is we're probably sitting on a treasure trove of no, African species here. Birds we and uh, so oh, start trading. <laughs> yep. If you think tippets are bad, yeah. bronze mallard. Yeah. The key to bronze mallard, again, is matching. And with bronze mallard, it's even more important. I've, it's one of the feathers that I've found to be... It's absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. So you buy these bags of Vineyard's bronze mallard, and you get five lefts and five rights, or whatever it is. And then you take out a left, and you take out a right, and you start tying. Your roof will explode. It's an absolute guarantee. Um, so what you do... Is your, again, you pick a left and a right. Um, so I put the lefts and the rights to side, and then I start marrying. I start. I start matching them up. Now, this big feather doesn't look like it's got a partner in this bag. No, it does. No, it does. I'll so you got that. So he puts all the rights on one side, all the lefts on one side, and then you start looking who fits with who. So you start off very simply. Putting them and, and, and looking at sides. Okay, so there's two rights. There's two rights. Then another right that I'm going to put aside. Actually, these two might work. Let me get that. These are all rights. Where's my lefts? There's a couple of lefts. Okay. So these two, so just generally, at a glance, these two do look compatible. Just, just holding them like that. So that's quick elimination. Um, these two not quite. So when you have two that you think are matched, hold them away from you, and then you check angles. So you take, you check all the slopes this way, that way, away from you. Sweep. You check the whole lot. Now these two do look very, very close. Okay. So they look very close. As a last exercise, I'll put them on top of each other and see if there's a... And that's as straight as you're going to get mallard. Okay. Yeah. So that's as straight as you can get mallard. So Eight I points. know these two will make a good pair for a roof. So I'll take a left, I'll take a right, I'll take a left. Put them together over the top, and then I know, <coughs> I know that when they go on, they're not going to want to do this. They're not going to want to fall over the wing, and they. And you can't. You can't. You cannot. You can, but. That's something I that won't. the books don't tell you. You see, like if you go read Redensic now, nothing against him, but if you go read Redensic, he doesn't talk about that. He just says a right and a left. But if you don't, exactly like Ruan says there, if you don't get, this is something Ruan taught me. Because I could never understand. I'm like, I've got the right, I've got the left, but my roof's always wonky. He says to me, bro, angle. Do you ever do that? I'm like, no. Because if you do that and you get those angles right, 
they'll work every time. Boom. Symmetrical. Every time. Dish perfect. Perfect. No, every time. Boof, boof, boof. No problem. You know, the first time, the first time you did it, and it sits. And you can't ex you can't understand why the hell did I battle so much with roots? Because it's actually simple. Send that send that round and have but it. But you on. see, this is stuff that you you won't. makes a massive difference. It, it's just a thousand times easier to And also working with the right width of floss. You know, when I started, I thought that the floss that comes off the spoon is the way you work with it. Like for tag, sometimes, you, you actually want to split the floss so you have thinner sections to work with. You know, it, it, it just depends. You can, you'll see, we'll do this tomorrow. We'll split I don't know if I do it right, but I, I sort of almost detention it and then it it sort of fluffs mm. out, and I roll the wrap it like that, so it's yeah, that's a joint. thinner. Uh, you, you, you wrap yeah. it flat, yeah. your floss has to be flat when you wrap, Yes. Um, but what Gordon is talking about splitting, we'll show you tomorrow we'll how to show split you tomorrow it's, easy. Split it's very easy, it's surprisingly it's easy. easy. Yeah. Mm. You tension it, you put a needle in, and, it, yeah. and you split it. Split it's like splitting three. Do you, I know, I heard about this super glue on the head, but... Um, do you, do you use wax at all? Because yeah, yeah lots of lots shit loads. Of okay. shit loads. But it's not and it's not it? it's not wax. Not dubbing wax. It's not dubbing wax. So I'd beeswax. Yeah, it I bought is cobbler's wax. Cobbler's wax. Oh, cobbler's wax. It's I've got rosin wax. and tar and all sorts of cuck in it. You get two. It as well. You get the light one. Yeah, like I this. I bought some. So I've got a chunk of beeswax. That we still yeah, got that that guy's dry when you guys are dry. You have to add a bit of paraffin. Yeah. Rosin and beeswax. Is that, am I right? Have I got the mm. formula? Because remember that I've night we each got a chunk of beeswax. Yeah, but that, time yes, then. but the thing is beeswax on its own, not. Yeah. You need yeah. to put yeah. rosin in it and the paraffin. That cobbler dude I actually told you about, yeah. Yeah. makes his own. Dude, you see the wax is coming and he gave me a ball. It's in my car. It's the stickiest shit you have ever seen. He works yeah. with it in a piece of leather. I bought from MC yeah. some, what's it called? Dark, cobbler's Something wax. Mm -hmm. It's like a cake of wax. We wax, need to get this guy to make us some cobbler wax. It's, it's the type of stuff that that Davy McPhail always has stuck on his finger. I always thought he had a wart. I yeah. <laughs> realized it's yeah, wax. Stick it on your finger, George. <laughs> And uh, but it's to, to get it off your finger afterwards is yes, almost yeah. impossible. Here you go. So then tie the That's why that bottle is there. Because uh, what what is that? Wax, it's Acetone or uh, isopropyl? Oh, okay. Alcohol. I, I, I wax up. I, I, I wax up for let's say for the butt. And you want to use. You want to work with. Um, you want to work with floss. And it's just yeah. everything sticks to your fingers. Just everything <laughs> sticks to your fingers. Yeah. It's. Right. So fingers yeah. goes into the bottle, <laughs> and you can continue working. Right. It just sticks. So it's not, it's not dubbing wax. It so is. So where do you get that wax? Uh, this I got from John. From no, this is actually from Kai. Right. So just put it down. Mm. Mm. This is it. So let's see, how, see what that does to that thread. No, because I've actually got a question now about. Um, Oof, yeah, no. You see, yeah. threads and waxing. I've got you. Uh, the stuff I've got is as tacky as this, Drew. This mm. is duck tacky. Mm. I've got other stuff for a job that wasn't this tacky. Yeah, bites, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Jeepers. Yep. Yeah. You flip well, off you your fingers. Jesus. Very good with tacky, the sweet tacky. And you have to keep it warm, so I sit with it in my mouth, or it goes there. And, yeah. and I know it stays warm, so. I've got decent wax in there, especially if it's stuff like jungle cock. Because that jungle cock, it, 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 the moment you put a bit of pressure on a different place, it, it twists and it moves, and you've seen it with the tippet, which it goes everywhere. Hmm. Whereas if you use enough wax, if you use the wax well, not enough wax, you can't fix it with, with wax. Works. But if you, use, oh. if you use the wax well, it actually That's sets the material as you go. But you never ever, for example, want to use wax underneath. So, 
oil. Wax, wax under silk, disaster. Okay, wait, listen to this. Yeah, that's quite important. Wax under silk, disaster. You, you don't. Silk needs to be clean. You don't want any wax near your silk. So the wax is on the butt. It helps also with the ostrich mm. to let it stick. Yeah. Because sometimes it's not perfectly... Uh, your thread base is perfectly... And it just help, and, and, and if you don't have the wax, the ostrich can slide, so it gets it perfect. But that is so you're not using your wax in the whole fly. You're using it on certain parts of the fly. Yeah. The butts, the head. Yes. Do a select topping now. Gordy draws. I'm not a drawer. I look at my hook, I put my hook down, and then I start looking for topping. So I haven't done any selection, any pre selection, or anything yet. Um, see, that, that one is skew, so that's absolutely worthless. Just well, chuck that away. You see it? Okay, totally yeah. skew. Okay, so this is a head that I haven't sorted out properly yet. But it has been like semi sorted. Yeah. I hope I do get a proper tail out of this out of this head. <whistles> is that the box from last night? There was one in there at least. No, I don't think this is the I think this is the middle one. Oh. That could almost work. You need fun line also. I haven't sorted them yet. No, don't worry. This is, this, is the way that I, this is the way that the process works. So I'd rather... What there you go. Bum, bit of bum flop. There we go. That's probably... So... Rough. This could work now. Yeah. That's too small. Okay, so that one is too small. You, so what... Pick that up, pick that up in a second, Gordy. So I'll take something that I think might be, I'll put it more or less where I think the tail should be. As I said, as I said last night, for me, no, I don't think, I don't think we, we did talk about that. For me, the tail is an extension of the shank. Okay, so where the shank, I, I, don't, I don't care much where the tip and the barb and all these things are. For me, it's more about lines and being, even, you know, being or receive, or achieving the flow that I want. Um, so a tail for me on this hook would sit around about there. Okay, so around about there. Mm, so you, you can see what, hap what happens is it extends the shank of the hook and it bends up. So uh, you get the flow going through through the body into the tail. Mm. If I if I've got the tail there, I've got the yeah. straight part behind the tail that just doesn't mm. look good. Mm. If I've got the tail there, I don't have this. I don't have the flow back into the tail. So it's so almost just where the hook yeah. point is. So it, it's normally about where the hook point is. I see on this one it's going to be a little bit back. Okay, so it's going to be slightly back from the hook point. So that's where this tail will sit. That's way too short. You can see it's way too short. Forget about the skinniness for now. We'll sort that in a second. But it's way too short. I want the tail to be about there, the tip of it. Okay, so uh, Gordy's got one for us here. Kind of played it out to get it yep. looking okay. okay. Okay, so so it sits about there. So my, I'm going to tie it in where my tweezers are at the moment. I'll put it about there. It's a little bit long. You can yeah. shorten. You can shorten this a bit. Straighten this a bit. Oh, well, in a second. Okay. One also has yeah. to <coughs> choose that part of the rack who sits. That is, is that is still white. That is not Thicker brittle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you you go with it. You go with you go with it. Basically, where it's still white. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one you can see is a little bit skew. Mm. That tail. Okay. So that can be fixed to some extent. Steam. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. By pinching it. That one I just no. fixed. No, you just pinch and pull. Ah, oh, you just got over it, bro. Manipulate. Exactly. But there are limits. Some of them just won't Okay, do so it. if you look at it from the side, that's actually a very nice profile for a tail. 
So you don't have you don't have a, a, a mistake that a lot of beginners do make is the skinny tails. Um, see that that was a skinny tail. You just pinch it pinch it on the back. So what you're doing is you're breaking the raker slightly. Mm. You already you already got rid of a bit of that skinniness. Um, so you can manipulate these topics quite a bit. Okay. So there there, there you can see there's a mm. there's a nice bushy tail. Nice yeah, you know, it's flares. Flares. Yeah. Okay. Correct in knowledge. Yeah. It's not far off, Gordy. Mm -mm. It's just not on the short side. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's now just fiddling around. This might actually. Um, sometimes I'll use two toppings in a tail if the tail is too skinny. I'll actually add a second topping on top of the other one. You know, this this will give me a more an open profile, which is not a bad look. Would you lay them both on top of each other yeah, and tie them on once? Uh, no, I tie them I tie them Separate. separately. Okay. So if I put these two on top of each other like this. So you so you build it. Mm. You layer it. Okay. If your toppings so are weak, see there's a nice Double full up. tail. Right. You see the idea. So it's playing around with finding something that does work. Um, I think this could actually do it. It's going to be a slightly open. Looks good. It's going to be a lower open look on it. Looks good. Yeah. Good. But you can see. So this is where I start. I know more or less why I'm going to tie my topping in and my tail in. Uh, I'm going to tie it in about there where the tweezer, tweezer is now. So forget about where the hook point is. Again, you want to extend the you want to extend the shaft of the of the of the or the hook shank. So I'm going to be about halfway between the top tip and the top and the tip and the barb. It's going to be about there, and it'll sit like that. So that's about there. Okay. So that's my topping on my tail. So I'll put that down. Then I will, at the same time, choose my topping. Okay. Um, this one is fairly skew, but I can straighten that out. Um, bird species mm -hmm. do they use for toppings and tails? No. Really? No. Toppings and tails is pheasant. God, so we better preserve these golden pheasants. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Start breeding them. Yeah, no, I mean, otherwise we'll <laughs> be up a creek. Mm. <laughs> it's actually a nicer tail. We've already got friends in Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah, that's cool, right? Eh? It's a nicer tail. So I'll actually go with this one. It's a little bit straighter It's amazing as well. that you, you know, you, when you get it to the the spot, the sweet spot. Yeah. You immediately you recognize it. it. You see it. Yeah. You see um, it because you can see the wing filling yeah. it and everything. That's but, it. But now lights are something. He's gone through six toppings mm. and those are semi sorted. Uh, they're not he hasn't done a proper sort, but that's like an initial sort. Mm. So a lot of what you do is this is looking for the exact right thing. When you when you begin, beginners just want to tie. They just want to strap stuff on the hook. But a lot, with, and, and they, they just so want to do it that they'll put rubbish on. They don't mind. They'll just put any crest on. Yeah. Don't. Take, take the time. Take your time. Take your if, time. Okay, this one, I'm not going to do it today. But on this fly, I would go with this double topping that I've got there. That's nice and pushy. You see, yeah. it's full. You've got this golden, mm -hmm. you, you, get, you get the gold at the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would have gone with this, but I'm, we're going to do some single topping today. So I'll stick with that. Um, okay, now I... I see, I mean, that's something that I would have thought was taboo. I mean, it's one mm. feather and that's it. No, 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 no. So already I've learned something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. This head, I've, I've, I've been through this head properly. There's not, not much left on it. I should actually use a different light, a different one. So you can see this one is skew. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm holding it straight. It's falling off to the side. I am going to try and fix it slightly. Just 
Pray Comunica. A little bit better. Um, mm, not going to work. Okay. These are too long for the. I probably need to go a different, get a different door. Yeah. I've been through this one. Too bothered. Mm. This, this should be thrown away. Them. They all. That's better. Okay, so let's see if this works. This one is completely buggered. You see, yes. that's useless. Okay. It's absolutely useless. So, so don't even attempt it. Yeah. Setting yourself yeah. up for failure. Okay. You're just going to frustrate yourself out of your mind. Yeah, if you Check have out. a nice wing and everything. Is this better? It is better, yeah. Um. All right. So, so we get it, if I can get it to lie there. And I'll start, I'll put this on. You know what, let's do it this way. More devices um, relatively cheaper compared to a J vice. Uh, about the same. Oh. They're about the same. Yeah, they're comparable. Okay, it's too short. See, so this 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 part of the exercise takes a while for me. I I always sit and I fill around until I find something that I am Get really right happy. Flow. See, this is way 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 too big. Mm. You can see that. Because to tie this one in, I'm actually gonna have, uh, gonna have to do it there. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's there is a nice profile, but I'm at a part of the feather where I don't want to be. I don't want to go and tie it in there. Tie in the white part. Okay. So uh, in this drawer, I don't have a proper topping for it. This one that you did you fix one or not, Rudy? Yeah. It's also gonna be too big. It's gonna be too long. See, I don't want to. I don't. Want, I don't want to go past that point where the, where <coughs> it is now. And if if I go there, it just doesn't fit. Okay, mm -hmm. this will bend up just a little bit. This this step sets the whole fly up. If you do not get this set this step right, the mm -hmm. fly doesn't matter how technically good you are. It doesn't matter how perfectly you tie it. Mm -hmm. It will be buggered because the proportions are going to be off. It's going to be focuses yeah. focuses in the wrong areas. It's all the design. Okay, so that's this is right. It should work. Yep, we'll bend that up in a second. So we'll manipulate this to be proper. Well, that should be it. Check out topic. So we will manipulate this a little bit in a second. <coughs> Sorry, are you just using that thread at the moment just to sh show us the placing, or yeah, because no, I do this. Oh, you do. I do this. Uh, no, no, but what I mean no, is, no, he does this because he uh, doesn't draw, so he like. No, 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 no. But what I mean is, I start with the with the floss. Um, I tie in the 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 guts, and then I. I know. It's going to once take I, once I'm done. I take oh, okay. all this. No, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, once yeah. I once I'm done. This okay. is just for once design. I've selected my stuff. Right. I take it off and then we start tying. This okay. is just so this is a mocking stage. No, no, yeah. that's what so sure. that's where that's where the topping is going to sit. Gordy, this works. Yep. The topping will sit there. And now you can now you can visualize the fly. Okay, so I know how I'm going to do the wing. I know where my body segment is going. The whole lot from having done that. Beautiful. So you can see, not heavy. I've got balanced top and bottom. See that? Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. So that's a decent looking fly. Tippets there, 
We can. So we're gonna put a. We, we'll put a jungle cock in here. Okay, so I've basically drawn in the whole freaking thing now. Okay, so so this is our this is my process. <laughs> there. So now I've basically mapped out my entire fly. I know how long my roof needs to be. I know how long my JC needs to be. I know how long my tippet and my wing, my alice. And now, but the acting is, so it's a school kind. Gaan ek so. Spoken pop. And I'm gonna, ah, yes, so it's my print. It's a, it's a less free flow type of way of working. Like the way I did his was free flow. I just like made it work, which is cool. But this is, and what I did, I've got templates, which I've made for my, so, so I go like a shape of light. So I go, so then I'll go, this is a, on a rework, rework one workshop. And all the hooks that I have, I'll, now I can, I can deviate from that. There are different things I can do. If there's another style I want to do, like I can, ooh, oh, nice. okay, I'll show you, I'll do another style. Now, so we were battling to find smaller crests. So there's a cheat that I do is I, I come at the back here and I use these straight little spade feathers which gives you a more open topping. Now someone asked, does the topping and tail have to touch? No. No. Not. No. no. Okay. No. no there's, you, you get flies which are open, which do this. I'll show you now. They do, they basically, it'll do like, sort of something like that and it'll do something like Drawing happening. You can go high on this. You can actually take that bend out a little bit, even straighter. Yeah, even straighter. So, so now, <coughs> you, <coughs> sorry. So now, if you look at, <coughs> so we can go even straighter. Okay, like so, it looks like that. Mm. Looks like that, and then, so the wing it will rest on the wing like, like that. There, 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 there. Okay, let me just get my one, two, three, four, five. Basic shape sortage. So that's that's a whole different, different look, but still cool. And mm. still balanced. Still balanced. Okay, so if you flip it right, <coughs> so you can see it's still open, balanced. open, open, more closed. This I could have even got to touch. You can even go long tails. Go ahead, draw in. Go another one. Okay. Turn the other. Turn the other. So what am I doing now? So a longer Matt tail. Matt short style. Yeah. Okay. So we always talk about toppings too long, tails too long, tails too long. But you can do a long tail. You just have to, you have to match it. You have to balance the long tail. Can I do it with a longer throat or? Longer throat, shorter wing. So you keep a long tail, mm -hmm. but your wing comes forward a little bit. Ah, so you'll okay. see what Gordy does now. <coughs> so there's no, there's, for me there's rules in terms of the technicality of it. I, I don't, there's no rules for me in terms of proportions. It's for me, it's in my eye, what works, what do I like, what balances. And a fly that doesn't balance, you will see it immediately. Mm. Okay, so, so the something like a little bit longer on the throat there. Okay, wait. A little bit longer. There you go. Yeah. Okay. There, 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 there. So this is also a Highlander I've drawn here. But like, that's another vibe. So flip it round. So that. So you can see that's a long tail. That's a very long tail. Mm. Really long tail. That's another vibe. But look at the wing now. Can you see the wing shorter? But it still balances. Because if the wing, if the wing, if you pop, pop the wing long, 
it'll throw it out. Let's actually do it. So, so what, what happens is, for me the test is, when I look at a fly, the first look, is there something that catches my eye? Or do I see a fly? And then your eye gets drawn into elements of it. Okay. Instead of, you look at it and shit, there's a wing, or there's a tail, or a, you know, it's, it's overpowered on, on the sides. Or it, mm -hmm. So for me, that's balance. That's, that's my measure for balance. When I look at this fly, do I see a fly? Or do I see elements of a fly? First, first look. So you look at that at that fly. Yeah, you see a back back black background. But you look at that fly. There's nothing that immediately draws your eye. And then when you start looking, you see, like, well, you see the jungle cock and you see the flow into the into the tippet underwing. Mm. You start seeing the elements. But it's not a. You look at it and oh shit, there's a long tag on it. You know, this is why these donkeys, stands, these see, donkey tags. See now these. They, they draw your eye. Th mm. th that for me is not cool. That. It's too heavy on the back. Yeah, it looks like it's going to tip over. It looks no. like it's going to tip. Now, now check. The tails are the same length. But ch check. This one works. Okay, oh fuck. Where is this thing? This one works and that one doesn't work. Wing shorter. It's about visual weight. Mm. On it's this one, on this one, you, s you put a bigger hook and it's balanced again. If yeah. you, so if you, you put a fiver on there. See, if, so if you clap the bigger hook. Now all of a sudden we're talking again. So 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 this is the thing. But get this, eh? So so you tie and you tie and you tie, and it looks fine to you. And you tie and you tie and you tie. And your eyes change. You start. You don't necessarily. I didn't see it at first. Mm -hmm. It took me about thirty flies before my eyes mm. started seeing. And then I was like, holy shit. All the ones I tied previously are cock. Mm. They're all cock. So now all of a sudden it's like, for some, you've jumped a leap. Mm. You've like, it's, it's like, you know those 3D pictures that they say you've got to look through the drawing and then you can never see them. And then one day you go and you go, boom, an elephant comes. And you're like, oh, see it! It's like, you know, you're like, oh my God, she like, so it. And then you, you see it. And you're like, and that's what happens with salmon tying. Your eyes see them. You go, I phoned Drew on the one day. I said, holy shit, guy. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. He says, yes, welcome, everyone. Can you Yes, <laughs> 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 <It's gross> <laughs>
there's weight there that you don't want. So I actually there's I've got three sizes of gut. I've got small, medium, and large. And I will sit and I will check against my hook shank, more or less, just slightly smaller in diameter. On these, the medium strands is what we will use because gut is scarce as chicken feet. I mean, you can see the stuff is you know seen mm. around. It's it's brittle. Don't don't if you bend if you bend it's going to crack. It's very brittle. Yeah, that's so, so yeah, very, very brittle. Okay, that's right. closer than the one I've got at home. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is there. the medium. So what we'll do is we're going to do that in a second. So I, I put it on the hook and I, yeah, you know what? This actually does work for me. Okay. Because gut is expensive, I use short pieces. I don't go full length on my gut. Um, so about that length. Yeah, about oh, an inch is what I use. And then it goes into the mouth for a bit, for a bit. Perfectly flat, and it covers area very quickly. Okay. And then when you get down to it, when you get down to your tag area, you can see how, how thin you can spread it by just flattening it even further. So it, so you, you can build beautiful tapers with these things. That's the reason why I use it. I've got this roll. It's exactly the same thing. It's uni stretch. Okay. Um, so. This is where the nor vice comes in. Yeah. <laughs> so I start I start I start my because because the, the because the, 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 the gut loop creates a bit of a taper at the front. I start my <coughs> underbody just behind where the gut loop ended. Okay, so that already fills up a bit of a gap that sits oh, where that gut loop stops. At that step. It's sort of it, it helps you with that step. Okay. So then this gets laid down. What I do, what I do for my underbody, is I come to sort of where I know about halfway, halfway on the body will be. Um, again, keep pressure on it. Don't. Uh, you, you want you want it fairly tight. Okay. And as I go, I'm looking for bumps and unevenness. So I now flatten it out a bit because I can. I'm going to come back. But I don't want. I don't want a bump here. I want a, a taper. I so I flatten it out a bit. Okay, and I come back. And as I'm coming back, it gets round again. Okay. Now I'll take it to where I think the next. The next bump on the, on the, on the gut loop starts. I'll flatten it out again, and I'm coming back. Touching turn. Not like that. Okay, touching turns. When I when I get to when I get to that taper transition area, I work it out, I flatten it slightly. I don't want a bump. I want a taper. And I'm coming back. Now this you do as many times as you need to to get the, the profile, the bulk that you need. Okay, on a on a fly this size, I'll probably go once back so I'm coming back to just short of where the tail is going to be but okay we're not flattening it out again we're putting a lot of taper on it or is it to get it as smooth and straight as possible? both I want I want you want a cigar shape almost mm, okay. I want a profile to the body and I put the profile down through this I don't build the profile with my floss and the, all the other stuff mm. the profile is built with your underbody okay so again, coming up to that point where I, where that transition happened, flattening it out a bit. Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit further forward. Okay, and I'm going to go back once more on this fly. You can see I'm flattening it, at, flattening it at quite a bit when I'm at, at the transition point. At this point, I've, I've got a decent taper going, so I, I don't have to flatten again. If you don't have a taper, you just flatten again. Okay, so back to where that transition is. And then I will go to about halfway where my tag is going to be. And when I get to where that point is, I want it 
paper, pa not paper thin, thinner than paper thin. I want it really, really I flat. See through it. Yeah. So my tag, that's probably about halfway where my tag is going to be. I'm going to come back. You can see how thin it is. And now I start, now I start compressing it again. It's not, it's not flat anymore because I want to build up a bit of a taper. Okay, I get to that transition there. I'm going to flatten it out to prevent a bump. Right. There you go. There's a bump there that I don't like, so I'll flatten it out a bit. So you're manipulating the whole... The gillies is to use silk to do this. Uh, no, what actually happened is the traditional flies have got a full-length gut loop. Uh, so the gut loop goes all the way to the tail. I see. So that's how you got, that's how they got the bulk on the body. And then with this, I'll come back to where, more or less where I've got an even taper. Mm. Okay. So that's my underbody. It looks crap at the moment. You'll see how this changes in a second. Okay, so we'll finish that off. Touching turns going forward. Always being mindful of thread economy. Um, a dab of varnish on the tie in where the, where the whip finish spot is. <coughs> um, clear that off. Okay, so there's an underbody. Now, it doesn't look like anything at the moment. First thing I do is burn, burnish. If, uh, oh. I think there's a, if you can, you may. That's a serious thing, so sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. It's perfect. It's perfect. So put pressure, put pressure against, you know, put pressure with your thumb in the opposite direction of where you're burnishing. Burnishing. Now under bodies, I burnish against the thread. Okay, floss, you will burnish this way. My underbody, I go this way, and because of the uni stretch, the way the uni stretch is, no, that's not working. Okay, because of the way the uni stretch is. It flattens out. Oh, it was a stain. You've got a yeah. stone. Yeah, give me the stone. That'll work. It's gonna be better. Yeah, that'll work. Yep. Better. And you can see I'm putting pressure on it. If I take this thumb away, gonna, you see. So I'm putting. I just want to say, show you how much pressure I am putting on when I'm burnishing. Don't be afraid. Go for it. Okay. So I'm doing that, flattening it out properly. Now. What you see, there's a bump there, and there's a bump there. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's two bumps. Mm -hmm. You're squeezing with the pliers. My dad's very good. So if you stick here, then you done this. But it's going to be good. There you go. So if you look at that, there's a profile. It's even. It's even. There's a decent taper from the back to the front, and then back again, yeah. Short, just short of the eye, back again. Okay. And there's an underbody. And the whole time, you got to be flattening mm. it. So you, you understand. Mm. Okay. Then you'll cut that. Just watch out that the thread's going to climb over the bottom. So it's seated properly. So I mean, so you you're going to have to do this. The whole, you see it's twisting up, so we need that, and, uh, and so you guys, and uh, you see how, see how nice and flat it is there? So you're going to have to do this, You can actually now check this out. I'm not flattening it there. I'm letting it spin up. It's fine. Pull, pull. It's fine. And then when you get to the ends, like here, yeah, flatten. Whenever you got transitions, whenever you got transitions, you flatten. So you flatten the transition. But but you see what I mean? This is going to take you a lot longer than it took him. Yeah. Because the unspinning thing he doesn't have to do. So there's my head. Okay, 
so I know that from this point to towards the shank, towards the eye of the hook, it's going to be head. So all my all my winging materials is going to be tied in from there forward. forward. Okay. Now I'll mark out my throat. That's about that's about how much I want for a throat on the Green Island. It's the Green Highlander. It's that yellow. It's about how much I want. My tying point for my tail is about there. Probably a little bit further back. So my butt is going to be about that size. Okay. On the Green Islander, I'm not going to not mark out the, where the floss starts, where the floss finishes, and the, and the dubbing starts. And I'll show you. In a, I'll show you when we tie it why I do that. Um, it, it's got to do with it's got to do with the way that my that, that I'm going to wrap my 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 body rib. Okay. And the body rib, I want I want the transition between floss and um, and, <coughs> and 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 dubbing to be at the bottom of a rib section because that's where my hackle is going to start. So I want my hackle and my rib to start at the same point. But because it's not starting at the butt, I first have to work out my rib and then where I will tie in my body hackle mm -hmm. and then from there yeah. where I'm going to tie my silk and my and my mm -hmm. dubbing. Okay, so that I'll do when I start working on the fly. So on the Green Islander, this is all that I mark out. If this was a fly that had multiple body sections, one of the Trojan flies maybe, um, and I, I wanted to do three body sections, I'd mark out where my throat is, okay, because the throat doesn't, doesn't count as part of my body section. Oh, it eats important. upper body section. Important. Otherwise, your fly looks like this, and you've got a butt sitting there, and you've got your first body section, and you make them equal sizes, and now your throat comes out of there, Mm. This is short. Mm. Balance is way off. Yeah. Okay, so your throat, not part of your body sections. So I now know if I did a turn, this from that butt, from the beginning of that butt to where the throat sits is the length of my body. Okay, I'd mark that or I'd measure that. So there's the length. Okay. So there's the length of my body. I want three body sections. So I'll mark it out so that I've got one, two, three. That's too short, just a touch longer. Okay, this is the way I do it. There's a hundred different ways. One, two, three. And it's a touch short on the, and that's how I want it because I like progressive body sections. I like shorter at the back slightly yeah. longer slightly longer that's personal preference to me it makes sense if they equal if they equal lengths they appear shorter at the front okay then what I would do is I would put it at the butt I know there's my the middle point of my second body section and then just slightly forward from the next point there's the second and I can see that I'm st stopping just short of where that throat is so there's body section one two and then I would add both sides of that, this, the bit that you need for a butt. And there's three body sections done. See, now on Paul's tip of the wrist, he did this five times. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So remember to, remember to add the spacing that you need for your, for your, for your butt, for the ostrich butt. Because otherwise, if you end with your body section there and you do your butt... It eats up the next body section. Yeah. In the mm. end, you've got a long body section pushing at the back, and so you're pushing the shorter. So this is how I, I plan my fly. <coughs> so now I know head starts there, throat's going to start there. I my tying point for my tail is on the end of on the back of the black, and the butt is coming forward, and then I obviously the the tip is coming from there to there, the tip and tag. Okay, that's how I mark out my fly. thread at the front so I'm back on my tying thread now okay so 
you do touching turns. Because, we, because we're doing um, dubbing at the front, it's not that critical, but I still prefer to do it proper. Um, So with this thread, you can still see your markings, but it's starting to cover it up, especially when you're working with silk. It's a good <coughs> thing. Okay, now, now I'm so I've, I've that's the area where my butt is going to be. So I know it's not too critical. This area is where my silk's going to be. It looks like it is uneven. The moment you can burnish that out fairly easily and fairly well. See that smooth? Okay. So in this section, in this area. <coughs> careful of bulk buildup of any kind of bump or hollows or anything weird because we're going to use a very very thin piece of floss to do the tag with and it shows up the smallest little imperfection, imperfection. <clears throat> okay so that's where my this is one where my tip is going to begin just burnish that out a little bit Okay, right. So tip is fine tinsel, extra fine if you have. Okay, so it's fine tinsel. Right? Fine tinsel, very, very fine tinsel. Okay, and they use an oval normally on the tips. The pattern normally calls for an oval. So fine. Okay, this, probably go with that. This you can get at Streamix. They've got um, Mavon Garner on this one, guys. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go too fine, but you obviously want to go fine enough so that it, it's everything at the back is thin and fine. So you do want to have a thin tin. So I, I, I would very likely go with an extra fine. Yeah, let's go with the extra fine. Okay. So again, matching, matching, matching everything up in terms of weight and all this kind of stuff. All right, so as you can see, a very, very fine, very fine tinsel for the butt section. The way that you work with tinsels, pinch it, pull off the tinsel, off the core. So that exposed the core, so I don't have tinsel on there. Okay. Just wet it slightly, and then I tie off. I I my tie off point for everything that I do is just back of the bottom half. So that's the front of the fly. Okay, there's the back of the fly, bottom of the fly. I tie off just back mm -hmm. of the bottom. Okay, like that. Keeping flat wraps because you're gonna tie you're gonna tie the tip on top of that. Okay. Right, so now we wrap. You don't want it twisted, you want it flat. Now the first wrap I've got on bear shank. It's not talking, I'm trying to do this. I'm probably going to be too short. So, on bear, on bear, and then at the bottom of the hook, I'm crossing. Okay. So, when you look at it from, from the side profile, the tinsel wraps <coughs> are sitting like this. Yellow floss with the ribbing over. Then, a front section of um, seals for dubbing with the ribbing continues over and from the front section of seal's fur, there is a hackle. So the green hackle and the, the green hackle and the seal's fur is the same color. Um, so we'll quickly chat about hackle selection, how to get the right hackle, um, how to tie in a rib, come back with a floss. 
So this, let, let me rather start this way. The sequence that we're going to tie this is we're going to tie in the rib. Okay, at the back. At the back, bottom, same place that we tied in the rib or the, the tinsel for the, for the tag. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to come forward to the... I'm basically going to take my old thread forward and hang it up. Then I'm going to wrap my rib and see where the intersection is at the bottom where I want my hackle to start. I'll mark that with my pen. I'll come back. I'll tie in my floss. Okay. I'll tie in the hackle. I'll go forward. I'll, I'll dub forward. Um, thread over the post. Bring my rib for uh, my rib forward. Tie that in. Bring my hackle forward. Tie that in. Okay. And then the body is done. Then we still have to do the throat though. Um, I actually prefer the more natural colors. The Green mm. Islander is gaudy as well. Um, <coughs> so throat feather you don't want taper on it okay so straight edges top and bottom you don't want it to taper like a body ankle and the other thing that you look at is the fiber length must be the same length as what the front hackle fiber is if you've got a short throat you've got this hackle sticking out at the bottom mm -hmm. and your throat stops halfway or two-thirds <coughs> of the way down the hackle if it's too long it sweeps past the hackle and you've got You've got this throat sitting there and your taper there. So you want to continue the taper that you have. But you don't do it with a tapered feather because you're only going to make two or three turns at the most. Okay, That's the way that I prepare my throat, throat feathers. The one other thing that I do is, so these are the fibers that I know I'm going to use. I'll pull them back. That. that okay so that's the prep that I do for a throat feather okay it goes in keeping in mind tight to your hackle you don't want to see thread between you don't want to see any thread on these flies the only thread that you ever see is at the yes. at the head okay so you start right at the hackle where the hackle ended I pull these back Sunny, sunny, shiny side, sunny side up, <laughs> shiny side down, dull side up, in underneath, and you catch it there, okay, right, couple of turns to secure it, do not be tempted to cut that off yet, right, so now to wrap this, that. to wrap this, what I'm going to do is fold as I wrap, so pick the feathers to pick the fibers up and lay them down mm. okay you see what I'm doing I come over actually should do a little bit more so pull over and lay them down like that okay um, a couple of wraps is sufficient for a throat Okay, get that all back. Okay, so you see, all facing back. The fibers are facing very sharp angles back. And it's because I wrap, I, I pulled the feathers in under the rakers and trapped the feather, the, the barbs with the rakers. Okay. Listen to the bird going. <laughs> He's lonely now. He wants attention. Right. Trap that old thing, trap all of it, okay, that looks good enough for me, tie this off, <laughs> yes, no, he's going now, I don't know, he's having a major chest in his stuff, right, touch of varnish, Excess, cut off the thread. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I think that's Stephen. It's Stephen. I think it's Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. right. So it's still a little bit wild. Same as you did with Akel. Off to this, off down and to the side. And yeah, just be careful not to pull it too far back. You want it more down than you want. And then you pinch that with a nail. You pinch that. And then you break on the rolls and stick the little fiber. And there you go. There's Boom. a throat. Thanks for coming. Okay. Throat. My head is perfect. I've got perfect amount of space for my head. I'm going to start with black thread now, and the black thread will lay a base which is which comes up equal to the height of the throat. So when I tie in my wing, there's no kick up point. It'll go continue like that. So there's a green oil in the body. Yeah. <coughs> Jeez. Right. Okay. Tip it underwing. First thing we have to do is select a pair that works. Okay. So that's where it helps when you've got them set up. What I'm looking for is the middle bar or the bottom bar to line up with my butt. Okay. And the orange not to extend too far back. So that's the sort of length that I want. If I lay it on there. I'm, I've got enough length at the front to tie it in. Okay, so that's very simple, more or less what I want. Okay. I could probably go slightly smaller, a sm slightly smaller set of tippets. Um, That doesn't look bad, does it? Okay. So we'll go over this pair. Actually, do those. Okay. Right. So, tippet prep. I just get rid of the really, really fine stuff on the edges. And then at the bottom. Yeah, my fleas last off. At the bottom. I trim off a little bit more than at the top. Okay. Right, so that's more or less what I want. Tie in point there. Nicely lined up with a bar. Actually a little bit a little bit more to take off. So don't worry about them not lining up or anything just yet. We'll sort that out in a second. Okay. Then what I do, got them lined up like that. It's actually not a perfectly matched pair. So I wet them properly. Okay. Then my tying point. I put in what people love to refer to as a Z Z bend or a Z bend. A Z bend. Z bend. A uh, rodent is called it. Bottom up. Bend. Top down. And the reason why you do that is it helps you get over the little bump 
Ah, it sits there. Okay. Right. Box in. <coughs> so, tie this in right on top of the hook. Yeah, I guess this is skewed better. I'm going to use a different pair. It's skewed. You can see. Mm. And my wing is going to go that way as well. This is where it's very important to have left and right. Mm -hmm. We talked about left and right yesterday. Mm -hmm. It really is very important to have left and right. Um, we'll get that sorted out later. Okay. So the way that I do it, I'm going to clear up space. I'll get this out of the way. And this is something that you take your time with, but don't fiddle. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes people that are just starting off with these things make is fiddle with the married wings. Don't fiddle with them. You zip them together and leave it. Don't try and, you know, and don't be soft about it. it. People are intimidated by it. I think you should be aggressive. Attack it. Go for it. Finish it. Done. Okay, so this one calls for, this married wing calls for bronze turkey, busted, Golden pheasant, there's, there's properly steamed golden pheasant um, cleaned up tails. You see, it's not, it's not that f fluffy shit. Peacock and green. Okay. Now you can re use green swan, you can use green whatever you want to. I like turkey with the heavier, with the heavier feathers, especially marrying to bronze turkey, to peacock. It's, it's just a heavier feather, it sits better with others. It's just a personal thing, nothing more. So, on this fly, probably 22 to 22 fibers, 22 to 24 fibers, mm. what would you say? Mm. So, I'd probably hit the 24. I'd go 24, yeah. 22 is going to give you a slender wing, you're going to see more of the under wing. That's what I did. Mm. That was 24 20. gives you those two extra barbs, which covers a bit more of the under wing. Okay, so this sort of fly, you normally... For a 2.0, for a 1.0 oh, you're doing about 20 to 22, 2.0, oh, 22 to 24, 3.0, oh, 24, 26, and so on. Big 5.0, oh, 6.0s, oh, you're putting 32 odd fibers. <coughs> wings, massive wings. Um, easy to build a to collapse. Right, so what I do, um, the decision as to how many of which, busted is always the most for me. I love busted in my wings, um, and I add them between slips. Okay. At the top, four to six pheasant feathers, feather, pheasant, pheasant feather fibers, four to six. Color, I'll add four to five. Okay. So if I have got six of these, I've got four of these, leaves me ten. So I've got twelve to go between three. So I'll then probably go six three three. Okay, so that that to me in my mind's eye looks to be about right in terms of the mix of color and natural and so on. Okay, so six three three <coughs> four. I probably won't go six with the with the pheasant. I'll probably go four. Okay. Four pheasant. So it, it, you sit and mess around with the idea. Four pheasant. See, that's four. It's probably just, no. I'll go uh, six. I'll go six. Go the I'll go six. You can probably go the twenty-four. I'm going twenty-four. Oh. And six pheasant. Okay. So now get up your get up your get out your slips. As I've explained yesterday, um, some of the some of the feathers, if it's a center or an equally equally balanced feather, you you can use a single feather. You don't have to have both sides. Both sides on this feather is equal, it looks good enough. The easiest way to know how many fibers you have, on the bottom you go 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So with the tip of your with the tip of your scissors, count you can count them. Okay, so there's six. And there's six. Keep your left and right separate. Left, right. Right. Okay. Right, so that's the six busted. Don't try and be too fancy with wings in the beginning. Um, really don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can you can get creative later once you know how to put them on. Just like do a simple married wing and get it on. Okay. Uh, these fibers they are long enough. There's a bit of there's a bit of stress marks in this, but I've got three clean ones. So one, two, three. Cut that out. It's that side. Thanks, buddy. Okay, from the other side. Oh shit. No, I don't have the other side. Ah. Okay. I've got a problem here that the other side doesn't have the same feathers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch off the tips. Okay. Three. Okay. And you can see it's nasty tips on that. So all I do is pinch them off. That's good enough. Okay. All right, so that's the, that's the turkey. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Mm. Okay. Three of these. You see the length of that, Gordy? That's awesome, bro. That's the longest, best peacock that I've seen, that I have. It's a decent thing. The peacock that we, we caught the other day. Who was with me at my flat? Nevada. Mm -hmm. Got that length. Yeah. Now that's excellent. You do. Oh, that's and excellent. You've got a couple of pairs there as well. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, that, that side. One, two, three. Side. Okay. So, got the turkey. Mm. Ah, got the peacock. Peacock. Color. Now, this is not the best that I have, but it's going to do for now. This is actually the offcuts from the stock that I sent you guys. It was in the color packs. side one two twelve sixteen twenty two what did I do? I've only got 22. 6, 6, 12, 16 plus 6 is 22. So I'm going to add two more bust, but I'm bastard to it. I'm Corey bastard. I've only got 22 on this wing now. So I'll add two more. Okay. Right. And two, two you can work with, one you can't. A single fiber you cannot know yet. I'm, I'm sure there are people that can. I'm not one of them. There is a there is a way you can do it. That not, not a single fiber. No no no. You don't not marry single the fiber. single fiber. You marry. So this five is what you, you do. Strip off. You marry five, and you strip four off. And then you've got a single and fiber. And then you've got a single fiber. But to marry a single fiber. You can't marry a single. But the way to put a single impossible. fiber on is to marry five and take four. Off. Or marry two and take one off. Yeah. You always when you're doing single fibers, you're always going to be left with one fiber that you probably will have to throw away. So I'm going to add, but two you can do. 
invaluable when it comes to marrying. Absolutely invaluable. I marry from the bottom up, okay? And I always start with my shortest at the bottom, which is normally a peacock, but in this case, it's my it's my mottled turkey. The reason why I do that is at the top you need a longer fiber. It's quite logical. And you, the top your fiber is longer, the bottom mm. the fiber is shorter. Um, so I start with my shortest at the bottom. So I'm going to add, what I want to do is have my busted, oh, my, my, my turkey and my peacock separated. That's not good enough. So what I'm looking for is on the tips, I'll show you in a second when I've got it done. That's how easy it is to marry, okay? So you just, your line at the bottom, you just put, stroke it. Don't try and fiddle and mess around with it. Stroke the thing. Okay, so what I'm looking for is not an angle, and when I've got the wing done at the end, I'll show you how you adjust that as well. I'm not looking for an angle like that on my wing. I'm looking for an angle like that on my wing, because my tail angle is up. Yes, we're looking for about 45 degrees. Oh, even less. I'd say even less. Okay, so after this, I'm going to add my peacock so what I do grab it in the middle get them to join there and throw them up okay married but you can see I'm going for a steep angle on it I'm not going for that I'm going for that as well it's a very close to square in fact it's not far off square okay now I'm gonna add two busted no, actually half of this busted now you can see this busted has have a sharp edge Okay, if I put it on there, you see what happens to the edge of my wing? It's messed up. But because I'm only going to use two fibers on this, I'm not worried about that. If I was going to use this whole section, I would reshape it, and I'll show you in a second how I do that. But I'm only going to use two fibers, two fibers on this busted. Okay, so I put the whole lot on, six of them, and I take four off. So there's two on. So now I've got turkey, two busted, peacock, two busted. Right, I'm going to add my color also in two sections. Around. And this is not a complicated wing, it's not single fives and all that kind of stuff. Don't, um, and you're not overdoing the color and it's you'll see in the end it's it's it's, it's going to be a fairly almost a placid wing if i can put it that way so i'm going to i'm going to do two fibers of color so four on two off okay i'm going to add two more busted Take two off again. Add last bit of color. Busted. And a pheasant. Now you'll see the pheasant, I oh, actually demonstrated here. You'll see the pheasant does have an angle to it. Okay, I want to get rid of that angle. This will increase the angle, okay. This will decrease it, okay. So grab it there, stroke it out, take it to the back, straighten it, angle gone, okay. 
Um, I actually took out too much of the angle. So I'll put a little bit back. And this is where pheasant becomes unforgivable. So there's a married wing. You can see what I'm going for. As much as possible, natural, with touches of color. Mm. You see that? So if I put that against this fly, you see that? Mm. There's a lot, already a lot of color in it. Dull it down a little bit at the top. Okay, so that angle of the wing is very close to what I want. You see it, it, it follows the angle of my tail. I swing it around. Okay, you see, slightly sharper. I want to take a little bit of angle out of it. Same as what I did with the pheasant. They just want to be stroked. They just want to be stroked. And between your fingers, you just keep going. And then I'm going to put a hump in the wing. And there's my wing. Okay, so when I tie it in, it'll actually pull down even further. And that's more or less what I will have. Okay, so that goes on there. You can see I've got flow and shape and everything going. Now I do exactly the same on the other side. I start with both hands straight, I put them on top of each other like that. Right? So there's my two wings. I then work with both of them yes. together. Okay, get my tips to straighten out, get them to line up properly. And they won't stick to each other. Nope. No. Left and right. Left okay, right. so I get my I get my bulge in it. And there you go. So there's a set of married wings. You see if I'm holding them at the top. I've got a bit of tenting going on. They open up. Mm. Okay, they open up. And then this goes on like that. Mm. On okay. Top. So working with them together like this for me works. Trying to work shape and whatever else a single wing, I find a little bit more difficult. These the two wings they they work they bind each other if I can put it that way. The other thing that I often do is these two I will put down. Get a, bit of, get a bit of weight in them and then come back in half an hour because for some reason in some way those little hooks and loops they marry now they, they the wing becomes tougher the wings be, wing becomes harder this is just I don't know if it's true or not it works for me it might be that I'm taking a break now and not thinking about the wing anymore but for me this works so putting them down wait them. walk away what you're trying to achieve is for the fibers, if I, let's say the fibers are like this, that's the fibers in the wing, okay? You want the fibers to collect, collapse on top of each other, compressing right on top of each other like this. You don't want that happening, mm. okay? Or this happening. You want the fibers to collapse right on top of each other. Mm. The reason for that is if that happens, the wing, this continues through. So your wing wants to fold, first of all. Secondly, anything you put on top of this is going to be pushed away from it. It's going to give a shit. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I put a roof on top of that, or on top of that, you can see it's not flat against the wing. <coughs> okay. So what you're trying to do is collapse the fibers right on top of each other. Okay. Now, the way that you do that, We'll, we'll, I'll, we'll, I'll talk in a second about getting, you know, setting up and everything else. Once you've grabbed that thing there, and you've got the wing there, you pinch and you pinch hard. And you hold that pinch. You'll put a wrap over and another wrap. 
and then just slowly pull it down. And as you're pulling down on this with this hand, you're working you're working that bend into it. That where the wing comes down and where it comes down into the tying point, you're working that bend into it. And pull, 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 and work it, you know, manipulate it. Don't let this hand go. This hand you let go when you know you've set it. <coughs> okay, so you, you will feel it starting to work between the fingers and don't be tempted to let it slip a bit or to help it along. You keep you keep this pinched. You keep it pinched tightly. <coughs> okay. So you keep working down, down, down. And then what I do is when I'm when I think I've got it collapsed, I'll still have this hold held. You won't you don't see the wing or anything. It's a there's a moment of revelation or absolute dis dismay when you when you're done. Um, but as you're collapsing the wing, you know, you, you, you can see from the top and you can see from the side what these feathers are doing. So I said I've pinched you for hold. As you're collapsing, you're looking on top of it, you're looking to the side on in the front, um, in the front of where the pinch is. And there you will be able to see whether the thing is actually folding or what, what it's doing, whether it, it might be tipping over to that side. Without letting this go, you manipulate it back and you so until you think until you look on top of it and it looks like it's collapsed flat, everything is in place and you hold and then you go one, two, three, now I'm not gonna release yet and you <laughs> So you Say hold bread. <laughs> you hold this thing. And then when you when you think you've got it down and it's seated, it's set, then only you let go. So it's critical, it's key that you do not let that wing go until you know that it's set. If you let it go before and it's not set, to get it gripped again is a problem. It allows it, if it's not set properly, if you let it go, it allows it allows fibers to pull out of place when, it's, when it sets properly. So the key to setting a wing properly is holding it. Do not let it go. Okay. It's the, the most important first thing. Now, setting up a wing to mount, I prefer having some sort of stubs at the front left. Other people cut them off. It's whatever works for you, doesn't work for you. I, I don't like when, I, when I've got a wing with six and se seven and ten different things in it, I'll start cutting away because then it's too much bulk exposure. The reason why I prefer having this there is it gives me, it, it's not support for the collapse of the wing, that's rubbish. It gives me a reference for where the underwing sits. Okay? I can see a line going through the fly and I can work both sides of it because what you want the wing to do also on an underwing, the wing wants to sit. Hold your hand up. That's the underwing. The wing wants to sit like this over the underwing. Okay? So when you when you collapse it, these tips of the underwing sticks out the front. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't want it like that. Mm -hmm. You don't want something like this. It wants to sit on that. top of the underwing. Mm -hmm. Okay. It all makes sense. Right. So so get your eyes in close here. Yeah, come to look right here. So for me, what, what I do is I first get my wing to be, you know, to, to look like I want it to look. In terms of, in terms of bulges, in terms of angles at the back. Okay, so you've got you've got that angle, which I like to match to my tail angle. You've got the hump at the front, which needs to come into the tie-in point. Okay. So the first shape up, you get it ready to go. So that's more or less what I think it should be. Then I'll check it. Okay, is that what I want? So as you can see, I'm holding it at the tip. It tents at the bottom. It opens up, which gives me the opportunity to hold it over the wing. To see, is this more or less what I want? Um, and I'd say this is close. I probably want that bump a little bit further back. So to change this angle, okay, you hold there and you pull that. That changes that angle. Mm. If I push that way, that angle will collapse. If I bring it this way, the angle will become steeper. See what I'm saying? Understand? If I do that, see there's a sharp angle. If I pull it back, it's a shallow angle. Mm. Okay. So to change this angle, you hold there and you move that. Once you've got that angle set, you hold there and you pull this into the shape that you want. Okay, so there's 
And, and look at the top shape, look at the angle at the top, work with both wings, do not try and do this with a single wing. So the wings are straight when they're lying on the bench. You pick them up, get them together, make sure that they are together, both sides everywhere the same. Okay? And then you start shaping and manipulating as you want. <coughs> okay. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. Make sure that your tips of both wings are equal. Don't, don't have that. You see? Okay. So you want the tips to be equal. Okay. Right. So that's what I want. So I've got the I've got the straight edge of the wing following the underwing. And then just where the underwing starts to drop, it starts to drop as well. So there's my there's my angle that I want. Okay. Yep. Right, so now what do we do? Okay, so you set it up where you want it. Both sides of the underwing. And this is where I've got problems because my fingers for some reason gives me a bend in the feather. And you see that when I pinch when I start mm. pinching, mm. Curls. it curls. If I collapse this, it creates a fold like that in the wing. Okay. Right, so got it. I'm holding on. Now, there's all kinds of tricks that you can do in terms of spit and whatever else. I've never found anything that really works for me. So I've got the two wraps over. And the one is stuck now. There you go. Okay. See, I'm making sure that my tying point remains straight up. Um, I can't let, let go now, but don't let shit slip. That's what he's saying. Yeah. <coughs> and take your time with this. Don't rush this. So what you're trying to do, okay, I'll explain that in a second, but because I don't, I don't want to let go now. But you see, I'm working the tying point down. So I'm collapsing the wing. So what's going to happen is the top, <coughs> the top fiber. You don't want the top fiber to to pull back as it shortens. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's got mm. a long way to travel. So to get that travel, it needs to collect material from somewhere. You want it to collect from this side, not from the wing side. Okay. You can see that it's all blown out. It looks like it's blown out. Yeah. Let's pull it back. I don't know why this, why this thread wrap is sticking. It's a little bit weird. So you can, you can manipulate and keep going crazy as long as you don't lose grip on this, okay? So I keep pulling it back, I keep pulling it, pulling it up and putting it straight. And I put a few in there, you can always take them off. This is, this is all part of getting it nice, nicely collapsed. So you wrap and unwrap and feel. Yeah. And yeah. Check at the point where you don't want to trap your throat or get thread under your yeah, throat. Yeah, you don't want to go that way. Mm. Okay. Mm. But you also don't want to go that way. So and you also don't want to do... So completely perpendicular. So just yeah. you also take the don't time. Do that. You, this is what I was trying to say perpendicular. before. Perpendicular. Mm. You keep that thread perpendicular. Okay, now, say a prayer. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, total explosion. It looks like it. Okay. So My wing is collapsed. Oh, shit. Okay, I've got that on that side. So I do have a problem on this side. I'm not going to sort it out this moment. What you will do is you'll go back. Forget about this for now. Don't worry about that. Th this does look shit as it is. It will get sorted out. Okay, what I am going to try and do is sort this out. So, so 
that there didn't collapse on top of the wing. Okay, so we'll try again. So you can see it pulling over. Mm. Okay, so we keep bringing it back. Mm -mm, I'm not gonna get this one right. It's better. Mm. Like the fiber that's that's broken. That, yeah, I, I did break one that I'll pull off in a second. That's not gonna be the no. oh, this side of it again. Okay, so you keep going with it. All right. I'm gonna finish off with it as it is. Um, okay, if you look at it from the top, it's not it's not the worst. I'm not well, entirely happy with mine, it. So now. now, what we do now, you see how I'm printing it back, pushing it back. Okay. You see, it's it's not sitting straight. Okay, I can manipulate that a bit. Push the edge down a touch. This is where I now start working, seeing if I can get it to my tail. And this is where the fiddling comes in. Yeah, and don't fiddle too much. Fiddle, fiddle assuredly, if I can put it that way. Fiddle with authority. Don't fiddle with, you know, for fiddling. Right, so see that explosion, don't worry about it at the back. We sort that out, you can fix that again. But this for me, for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy with it. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to put sides on it. I do have a flat enough wing for what I'm going to tie further on. Okay, if I was going to do little um, Indian crow feathers and all that kind of stuff, I would probably have taken this off and went again. Yeah. Um, but with jungle cock, it's nice and straight. It, it'll cover up this area and... Did you? Say? <laughs> I did say. Uh, so I did it say. Yeah. So, so, so check this out. Okay. So if he was, if this was like an exhibition flight, if you were gonna, that wing would come off again. Yeah. yeah. You would steam it. Steam it. You would boop, and you would go again. This process there, that's just happened there. This could take you a while. Mm. I'm not. I'm not happy with this wing. Not. Not even remotely. I mean, you can see on that side how it's. There's, there's fibers that fell to the side. It didn't, it didn't entirely do that, mm -hmm. but what it did was it fell to the side. I'm not happy with that. So what he's saying is they're not on top of the hook shank. If they yeah, like fold it over. I just yeah. want to draw this so that if, so, yeah. we just take these ones off. <laughs> if the hook shank the is in cross section like this, you want the oh, wings not on top. It's not on top, it started falling over the, the side. You want the wings on the top. Green, the green is the minute they start over, doing that. Yeah, the middle buster. That's right. Yeah, and you issue. don't want that. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. That happens so, to me too much. You know what? And that side, you can see the same. You know what? This this wing, I would personally take off and do it again. Okay. I would. Um, when I'm not going to do it today. I'm not going to do it now. But this wing, I would take off, take to the kettle, steam, go again. Okay. Not not happy with it. Not happy with it. I will. I can finish this fly, but I'm not happy with it. Right. Sure. So I think the most important thing is that we, we understand what what the problem is. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. And so what's happened is it's folded there. You can see that these that went under these two. Yeah. Okay. Plus it slipped over the side of the shank. Mm. Yeah. It's not on top of the shank. Mm. This need this this should not be sitting on the side. It should be sitting on the top. Okay. Like more. That's more on the top. Yeah. This, this is actually on the top, but again, I've got folds. Mm, mm. I've got very bad folds on it. Okay. This is not what, the what, No, no, it's not. So what happens is, if, you, if I would ever swim this fly, and these fibers unmarry, which mm. they do when you're swimming them, these things stick out that way. Uh. They don't sit on the wing anymore. So you've got these mm. keels coming out of the fly, and it'll swim... It'll start twisting and all, doing all kinds of weird shit. Okay.
Okay. So not happy with the swing, not at all. Um, but I think the principles yeah. mm, is understood. You see, the key here is he's not letting this hand go. There is not no pressure release on this side. This side you keep you keep your finger what fingernails white. You pinch because you don't want these to move. This side of the of the wing you do not want to move. All the movement happens on that side of the wing. The key is you, you saw sorry you saw how the wing at the back here was all blown up and mm. you know it was separated and was standing up and don't worry about that the critical thing at this point is your tie in point mm. that's the critical thing your tie in point has to be right if mm. your tie in point is right you fix you can fix any wing yeah so don't don't be dismayed if you let go and this you got a you know, needle. I just want to I just want to fix one or two things there. Do not be do not be dismayed if you let go and the back of the wing is blown out and exploded and don't be dismayed about that. Your cut your tying point is the critical bit. If your tying point is good, you can fix any wing. Okay. Okay. The tying point is the focus. Okay. That's the focus. Okay. The tying point. So one thing that I saw Gordon does my, differently my to I do. Never there, my wing. <laughs> oh, shit, the, the one thing that I saw that Gordon does that I do differently is he actually starts with the wing at the back. He starts higher up. When he holds it, the wing, the angle of the wing is like that. So there's the time. There's the pinch. Hmm. His angle is like that. My angle is like this. So everybody will have differences, and you will work out something that works for you. My recommendation when going away from you. Hmm is go and mount wings don't don't go and marry extensive wings and whatever mm. take a piece of turkey and take a piece of whatever you have that's available that's cheap take a number of them build a nice body nice, build a good body on a fly but then you mount three four five wings mm. take the wing off mount a new wing and add fibers as you go because this this requires practice a lot of it and it's easier to start with a smaller wing with less different materials and and so on mm. okay that's my recommendation it's up to you it's not it's just a recommendation okay so this wing is like 99 mm. okay i'm not happy yeah but let's not worry about that it's 99 percent yeah there's one little cucky there yeah and on that side and, there's one and yeah so but it's like but get this you'll get away with the sides on yep. this You'll actually on with this, this fly, one, get away. we'll get John away with it. Yeah, <laughs> but check ya, okay, check ya. Now the one difference is these things are on top. If you check ya, mm. see that's still on top. See it's yeah. on, on top. It's, it didn't roll over. It to didn't the side roll over to the side and on top yeah too. And that's this is the main thing is you need to now on this fly you'll get, we we are gonna get away with this. Yeah. Okay. The, and the reason why you will get away is if you look at it from the top or from the front you'll see that the wing is flat even though there's a little bit of flare of a bottom on the bottom you're not going to tie the sides on the bottom the side is actually tied in on the middle of the wing okay so because the wing is flat you've got a flat surface now to work on the roof will go on flat so the the problem there is only at the bottom very slightly it's a nice fly so let me That's tell you the, let me tell you the cheat the cheat on this thing. <laughs> okay, tricks. now check this out. See what happened here. My my mm. pheasant moved. Now that yeah. thing Ruan said about what you want is you want these guys yeah. moving in as opposed to those guys moving there. Yeah. Yeah. Mine did that very thingy thing, yeah. okay? But check check, check this out. Shape, this man. no, but this is the cheat. Visually, when this thing's on, yeah. Your eye is going to catch that before it catches that. It you won't. You'll actually you, you'll get away with it. No, no one will see it. Topping. <laughs> yeah, rather just do it properly. But like, you'll actually get away with that. So a good take out of out of the, a take good take out out of out of this is I mounted the wing and made a pretty good hash of it. Gordy's now mounted the wing and it's not perfect either. Yeah. You know, so do accept. 
that you're going to throw, throw feathers away, fibers away. Do accept that you are going to get frustrated with this. It is the way that it is. It's, a, that, it's one of the reasons why I hate doing married wings because you put, put a lot of effort into mm. building a wing and then this sort of shit happens. But it's, it's just, I don't like it. I don't like it. But you will, with this particular one, you'll get away. You'll get away. Yeah. Hmm. So that'll be good enough. So that'll be good enough. Okay. Oh, now, if like if this was an exhibition, exhibition, yeah. we'd take it off and go again, eh? Yeah, definitely. If uh, I was going to mount this fly in a frame or something, it will come off and we'll go again. And we'll go again. So the point I'm trying to make is that the guys who like been doing this for a while also sickle. It's not just a. It's like milking cows. Look, some people don't suck. I, the, you know what the problem is? I don't tie these things regularly enough. Yeah. You get oaks to tie every day, which yeah. I don't do. Yeah. So, like, the last time I tied one of these was like four months ago. Oh, so, I go do not so you, you do lose it a bit, you know? Like, if I had to play now for like a week and just, mm. I'll get back into it. This is all about form and what works for you, okay? What you will see is we've got a... My throat, I will pull out, pull out a little bit, because um, I would, I would sort of want to match on that, on that, mm -hmm. and this wing up at the top for me, I don't personally like. So what I will do, I will grip this, and pull that down a little bit. So you see what I'm doing. So I'm creating a different angle on my, on my, on my wing edge, a, a less steep angle. So you can still, you can still manipulate a wing, while it's on the fly. Cool. So you see, there's a different flight. It's better. All together. Gordy's wing. Gordy's wing sat there. Mm. I want that. It's a lot better. And and you can you can get away with quite a bit doing this sort of stuff. You know, I want even even a little bit lower. You see? So when it's in, what I'm trying to say is that if you've got your tying point right. You can manipulate this wing either, any, any either way. You can do a lot what you want to do. The critical thing is the tying point. That is the critical thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you need to focus on. is fairly messed up um, I'm probably gonna shoot you and fetch the other one what I want to show you is that you can repair nails and what I've done is the guys I think the guys that took the side packs or something I added some nail, some broken nails for them as well um, so you can see that's a pretty badly split mm. nail it's, it's split three ways the nail itself the splits aren't twisted and turned the splits are looking fairly close. If I, if I, if I pull with, if I take the thing, the feather, in the bottom of my fingers, and I pull down, you'll see it start to come together. Okay, and this one comes together fairly well. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this nail I can repair. The way to do it, I should have the thicker one. You, you want to take as thick a varnish as you have. Um, this is not the thickest I have, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you put a drop on the back. Okay, that's probably too big a drop, but it doesn't really matter. And then you pull it through your fingers. Like this. Okay. And when you're there, you hold it for a bit. It impregnates the fibers. So it impregnates the fibers, and you're holding it together. So where the splits were like that, when you pulled it through your finger, it did this. Mm. And now you've got varnish in between those. And that actually glues it back together again. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Okay. <laughs> Boom. Right. Yeah. So, your absolute, your flies that you know you're going to, you're going to mount in frames and so on, use your proper nails. Everything else, use the splits. Then okay. another question, when, when purchasing this um, from 
someone overseas, you can't obviously look for it. So is there a specific grading? Or no, no, you look for it. You ask a photo, you get a photo. Now here, for example, is a split, I think, which will be a little bit more difficult to repair. See, that, that split is a wide split, and the, and the edges have curled up a little bit. So if you pull it back between your fingers, you can see it doesn't really want to come back. See that? It doesn't really want to come back. So, yes, you can repair, um, but it's not going to be as good a repair as we had on this one. And this one, you can hardly see that there were splits on it. Mm. But do repair your nails before you put them in. Don't tie with split nails. They, it's, you've spent a lot of effort and time and anguish on tying a decent fly, and now you put this crappy split nail on it. And it's the piece of paper. It's just not worth it. So the nails that I did include, I think it was in the... I, I did include a few, a few extra nails for some guys. And those nails are all repairables. Okay, that mm. are specifically selected nails that are, that are repairable. See, this one, it's better, but you're never going to get this one. Well, you might actually. Just keep going. Um, if, you, if you want to frame a fly and you get a nail that is, you get nails that are solid, Mm. Isn't maybe just a good rule of thumb to do that in any case on no. a not? No, they don't. They don't split on the cape. They split in on the head. They split on the head. They split on the bird. Okay. Um, so see. So they're not going to split over time. No. Okay. No, I mean you can do this, but I've never had a nail split on me. Mm. That's Off not been split before. So what I would do is like when you start now, don't buy like triple A grade. JC, unless you get it for a good price, but even then, what save would a good it, price don't then use it. 1,500 Rand would okay. be like a good price for a decent fish. See, so this nail, it's better, but it's not solid. What's interesting is there's nails on here with five or six splits that will repair better than this one with one split. I think that's, that's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Don't be tempted to do this with super glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The jungle cock stuck to your fingers. You will, for a while. And See, so, steam, so that's steam better. Won't help. No, no. So that's better. See, with with jungle cocks, with your nails, you don't have the hook and loop scenario. You don't have an hook and loop like you have got with other fibers. It is literally, I think it's an, it's an enamel sort of, it's, it's enamel sort of compound that keeps them together. So there's no, there's no natural mm. hooking. Okay. Um, so it's got some adhesion over yeah. the surface. Yeah, so if, if we take this one, I mean this, this looks horrible, you see? It looks crap, mm. and there's four splits in that thing. Okay, so you wouldn't think it's usable. Feather therapy, just like it. Boom, boom. Well, this one is good enough to use. This one is good enough to use. Okay, so um, the other thing, oh, the other thing that I quickly wanted to talk about about jungle cock, um, a couple of things to look out for in quality. Um, there's many different varying color grades here you go very usable all right many different color grades and then you have the the whites here and the darker colors there some some of them the darker colors flows through some of them the white flows through some of them don't have two eyes like that but a solid black 
So there's a lot of variation of variations. You you have you have nails that are rounder and you have nails that are longer. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's very much a, a single bird thing. And this one is longer nails. I mean you can see these. Mm. They are significantly longer nails um, than round. These little nails at the front here, they long nails. Okay. So I just want to repair this nail slightly. I'm going to use it. Um, so there's a right and the equivalent, equivalent left. Okay, so these two will go into this fly. I might actually not use that one, but rather this one. Okay. One of the biggest mistakes beginners make is short sides. It's something you see on everybody's beginner's fly. You saw it on mine, I've seen it on yours, we've seen it on Gordy's. For some reason, when you're, you're a beginner, you tie in sides and cheek, you tie in sides short and then your cheeks are ridiculously short. Okay? What I mean by that is when we're beginning, this is what we do for sides. Yes. Okay. Check how the balance is just way off. You've got this little blip sitting here at the front. It looks crap. On this fly, I'd be going there. Yes. Putting the nail almost halfway into the wing. Not almost, halfway up the fly. You see, if you now add a side or a cheek, you've got room for a cheek. You see what I'm doing? Mm. And even more. Do you? <laughs> but now, surely these things do represent an eye on a fish. No. Mm. Not? No, these have got nothing to do with fish. <laughs> <laughs> Classics. Oh, yeah. You tell me that okay. looks like what kind of fish? <laughs> well, <laughs> I catch fish. In no. <laughs> I, believe, I believe they were used because it was a scarce material. It was gaudy. It was weird. It came from uh -huh. India. Why else would they use them? Hmm. Yes, when you're tying a wet, and you, you, you're you tying a wet and you've got a little slap and tail and, a, and you're putting the eyes on, then I would say, yeah, it might be an eye. But if you look at a photo of a fish, the eyes don't sit on the mouth either. Hmm. The eyes on a fish sit hmm. further back than you think they do. Yeah. Then, you know, we always think of eyes sitting in the front. On a fish, they're far back. Um, hmm. So with these things, when you're tying these, long go length but but isn't that perhaps why why we tie them short is because you you almost imagine it must represent an eye it, it could be it could also the reason why i tied them short i can tell you now the reason why i tied them short i thought that was the usable part of the feather Me too. Mm. Mm. i didn't consider that to be the usable part of the yeah. That's why I tie them short. Mm. Because you look at this thing. You're taking off the fluff. And yeah, you're taking off the fluff and you're, you're left with this beautiful nail. Yeah. And that's the usable side part of the feather. And then when you do that, when that's my tying point, because that's the eye of the jungle cock, it's short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just happens that way. But then you'd have to take a much longer. Nail. Yeah, but then the proportions aren't right. So for me, that's the tying point. See that bar? I stop just short of that bar, generally. This yeah, bar. yeah, this bar. So you, I, I, I sometimes will have my eye touch the bar. Mm. It's like that. Sometimes bring it back a bit, but that's more or less where you want it. it it's yeah. a focus point on the wing. Mm -hmm. It's not. If you do it, if you do that, mm -mm. everything pulls your eye into the front of the fly. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're putting sides on, you're putting roofs on. Everything pulls your eye into there. I want the eye to sit in the middle of, mm. I, I want to look at the fly, mm. not at the head. Okay, mm. so make your, make your sides long. <coughs> Don't make your sides too short. Okay, right, so let's tie in a couple of these. Um, that's usable and I will use, I'll use that as the other side. Okay, right. These are both right. Okay. So there you can see I've got a right and left. 
Okay. Um, the angle of the JC follows the angle of the wing. If you sometimes you see beginners, they put a left on the right. Yeah. It, it fights the angle. Mm. If Angles. I put, if together. I put that one, if I put that one there, fights it. Pops off. Yeah. It, it, it lifts it's off. It's going against the angle of the wing. Go with it. right, mm. right, right. Always goes on this side of the fly. Left always goes on that side of the fly. There, I don't know of exceptions unless you're going artistic and want to do weird and wonderful stuff. You know, I'd put, I would put a left on this side, but then I'm doing this kind of thing. Mm. You know, then I'm doing then something it's purposefully weird. Purposefully breaking. Lefts, the lefts on the bottom. When you're going on the bottom, lefts go on this side. Mm. Okay, on the top in the wing, rights go on this side. So you, you're always following this flow that you have. The, the fly is doing this. <laughs> when the water is flowing over the fly, it's doing this. Mm -hmm. So you don't want any materials that is fighting against that. You want the flow to continue that way. Okay. Right. So putting on sides, they are the easy bits and the fun bits, if I can put it that way. Um, Close your voltage. Yeah, it's... I'm just scared it gets knocked that, over over yeah, your juggle that, cock. No, that I, that I will not be happy about. That's a good idea. So I, the other thing people do is they tend to try and make these things too clean. Okay? Um, and I'll get to why I've said that now. You'll see that I've got ackles sticking out here. You see, there's ackles there. You see that? Mm -hmm. I leave that. Yeah. That's part of the... Okay. It's part of... It, yeah, it's part of... You tie these things too clean and too neat. That's that's something that we tend to do when we begin as well. You know, you take tweezers and you pluck, pluck these all mm. off, and in the end, you sit with this sterile. It, it looks contrived. Actually. Yeah, it just it, it's not cool. So the reason why I talked about it, the reason why that came up now is I'm going to strip it to there, okay? And I'm going to tie the jungle cock in there. I'm going to have some of these fibers hanging over the body here. That's fine. I personally like that. Okay, it adds, it, it brings, it brings, it, it joins the wing, it joins the wing and the throat because I've got fibers going this way which follows my ankle and my throat and I've got fibers <laughs> going that way which follows my, my wing and my, um, so you see if I put that, if I put that there, I'm going to have fibers that sit here over the throat. I like that. It's a personal thing. I like that. I don't, I don't want it sterile. Okay, so I know more or less my point, not more or less, I know my time point is going to be there. Okay, so <coughs> with jungle cock, you strip it. With chatterer, you cut it. Uh, the reason being, chatterer, you want, you want to tie in on shortened barbs of the feather because it wants to twist out. Chatterer is the exception there. Jungle cock, if I tie it on there, it's going to sit there. Okay, so you'll see I don't cut off the excess and stuff yet. I leave everything there. That's where I want it. Okay, so I put it down. And I take a wrap. Okay, not quite where I want it. Pick it up. Not quite yet. So manipulate it to where you want it. Hmm. Now you can see it's coming away from the wing. Okay, I don't like that. So what I will do, a bit of cheating, if you want to call it cheating. I'll actually just bend it in a touch. And I go again. Okay, see it's kicking up. You fix that by putting this side. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. Okay. Other side, so the same, measure my length. I want the same length as on this side. It's quite important. Yep, so flip it over. I, I like my sides to be on the, on the, on the, on the bottom, sort of splitting the bottom edge of the wing. That's something I personally like, okay? It's just a personal preference thing. Um, I like them splitting the splitting the edge of the wing. Okay, it's actually a little bit too low. 
Might have been about that if, if, if I put on a heavy roof now. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. See, again, I'm going as I'm as I'm tying this thing. I'm figuring out what I want. I actually like this at the moment where it's on the bottom edge of the wing because if I now put on a heavy roof, like a slab of mallard, which sits there. See, then I've got this halfway between the roof and my body. It's good balance. Okay, so that one has to go in the same place. Length, hair, it almost accentuates the tippets. Crap. Nope. Okay, so I'll bend this a little bit, push it back. See, it wants to fall over to the other side now, just pushing it back. Mm. Let's see the side. Okay. See, it's pulled away from the wing. See ya. Okay, look ya. Oh, I see that. Uh, Can you see this? Oh, see space there. there. What you want this thing to do is do this. So give me hands. Ian, give me your hands. <coughs> no, no, no. It's both. Yes, the wing. You wanted to do that. Okay, it it needs to say yes, wing. Oh. <laughs> 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 so it's failure <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So, this is now just manipulating the feather until you got it doing what you wanted to do. Die seven days you win. And if you're a scaly bastard, which you must never be, then you no. fucking home it. No. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm no, that, <laughs> if you're yeah. unknown. There we go. It's, it's no, people do it. People you know what? Yeah, okay. yeah for no, sure. But it is tough. But it's not, you're not tying a proper salmon now. You know, you're not. That's better. Okay, not quite yet, but this one is pushing away for some reason. So you just there you go. Into place. Ah, now this side put it out again. So it's just it's just filling around until you've got to doing what you wanted to do. I'm going to stick with it for now. I'll fix it up in a, in a, in a bit. But you, you get the idea. Mm. You get the idea of where we're going to with this. Okay. All right. So what I at this point do is I do... I do a little bit of a just like that okay because with a mallard if it starts splitting and breaking up it's you throw it away and you start again okay that's the first thing that I do I do clean it up a touch but I make sure that my varnishes are dry um, okay now roof ways I did show you guys how to match mm -hmm.
remember to always take from the same part of the feather, otherwise, otherwise they're going to fight each other. And with roofs, if you don't have the right material, it is an endless problem. Okay, so I'm going to put a nice thick roof on this one. Okay, because I've got my Jason out a little bit lower, I'm going to add a bit of weight through the through through the roof. Same on the other side. Now there's a lot of different ways. Okay, you can either cut it and keep the stems on. A lot of people prefer doing that. Um, you can use a single piece, fold it, so a piece like that, and you pull the tip straight and you fold it, and it goes on on the top. That's a way. I prefer the left rights. Um, all right. So something else that messes up, or that something else that people argue about is whether you go the other way around. Well, I say pliers for my, for my, my tweezers whether you go actually Gordy could Gordy do you go that way or do you go other way that way I go opposites like like this that side like is this is close yeah. side right side so there. that's both I, I do it the same way there are people that flip that over and go this way because you've got the natural curvature. Mm -hmm. Okay, my preferred way is the same as for the wing: rights on this side, uh, lefts on this side, rights on that side. Okay, right. So what you do, you can either put them together like that. No, this is not going to work that way. So the way that you do these is straighten them out a bit, get a bit of a curve going. Same as with the wing. And this is why I prefer not to have stem on because if you've got the stem on you can't reshape. So I prefer reshaping a bit, okay. All right, so putting a bit of a curve in there. No. What do you think, buddy? Can do? That should work. That should work. Okay. So this goes on that side, like this. I'll get there in a second. I just want to reshape this side. So you see what I'm doing, yeah? I'm putting a bend in the feather. Mm -hmm. that, that's the natural curvature. I'm breaking that curvature. I'm actually putting it this way. And that's why I prefer to cut off the, the rakers yeah, because okay. I want that edge to remain. I don't want a sharp edge there. Yeah, so I'd rather... Feather, yeah. Yeah, and when I hum, when, so when you're humping the feather, see, that's what you want. That's the profile that you're looking for because you can see when I... If I, if I hold this properly... You see? That works with the wing. Mm. It follows the curvature of the wing. Mm. If you keep if you keep the rakers on, you can still hump it, but then this angle becomes very sharp. Okay. Because that's the only way that you can do it then. Okay. I prefer to take it off so that I can shape both sides. Alright, so there This one's got a lot of whack again. one doesn't want to shape it's off the wrong side or the wrong piece of the feather it's because it's a shit feather 
Okay, it, right, it doesn't yeah. want to shape. Bro, check it a bit better. This should be a bit better. Let's All right, yeah, this is better. Good. So, with mallard, don't mess around with shit. Um, it's going to give you no ends of trouble. It's convenient, by the way. Okay. I see Gordy cuts as well. I see he cuts them as well. Yeah. He does the same. All right. <coughs> So let's try again. This is this side. All right. So I'm going to get a hump in there. Right, right there. That side is there. And I'm going to hump that. Okay. Right. So now you put that in place. Your length where you want it i like longer roofs not these short little stubbies at the front people like them there there's tires that like them like this okay there's tires that like that. I, I like a long extended past my past my cheeks yeah okay that's, that's what nice. i personally like okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set that i'm going to set that one on there okay set that one right next to it okay, so I've got it both sides of the wing flat on and you want it to collapse right into that little groove that you've got okay pinch hold the edge and both sides so it's collapsing both sides of the wing that side fine am yeah, I right I think you're fine now okay so don't pull down too hard on them okay I mean, no, no, you right? Looks horrible. It's fine. A little bit of magic. <clears throat> On the wing. Okay. And then you go. Dude, not a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see... Roof on. What yeah. most people do is when they start this, is they want to get that immediately. You see how I tied it up? And you just... Oh, yeah. And then you just go, so from the front, you just go. I don't think that meant my wings have been lately. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, roof is on. Yes, okay. Okay. I don't clean up the head just yet, okay, so I just, no, <coughs> just very slightly, give myself a bit of a tying point there, okay, right, so I've got a place where I can tie my topping in and I don't have a lot of interference going on, I'd actually get rid of this as well, okay, right, can I come with tweezers? Yes, sorry, I just feel a little bit Okay. Like a tweezer. Right, so now we determine where is the tying point for the topping and what's the angles that you want because you're always going to reshape the front. Okay, well, most times you, you guys probably won't have to, too, uh, won't have to. If you've got this kind of hump at the front, you're going to reshape. Okay, so that's the shape of my topping that I want. Okay, everybody sees this? Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit further down. There's the way that my topping is going to sit. So you can see the picture of the fly, the frame and everything. So from here, I need to bend this in. And my tying point is going to be about there. Okay. So to do that, just with your nail. Okay. You see that? See what I've done? Mm -hmm. So I've put, a, I've put a hump in there. Put it back. Test it. Okay, I'll actually even that out a little bit. If I don't do this, what'll happen is this topping is going to kick up. Mm. Okay, 
I want the topping to lie down on the wing. Just to hug it. So I'll extend that a little bit into there. So you can see how my topping now follows the shape of my wing. See that? Okay. Right. My tying point. Oh, do I have the tweezers on the right spot? A little bit higher. Oh, so I just need to you just take this little filo, filo plume or whatever they call them and just pull that off. I prefer personally if I can tie my topping in where my tweezers is at the moment. And this one I'm not going to be able to do it, but I'm still well within the white. Okay, I think that's about the tying point. Yeah. All right, so just shape this a little bit more. Okay. What I then do is I put a bend in. Okay. But sense. not but not excessively so. Okay. Um right. Clean it up. And the topping you clean up. Okay, you don't tie topping, you do not want to trap fibers when you tie them in. So you can see when I'm when I tie this in now, it's gonna naturally sit where it wants to sit. I'm not gonna have to manipulate and force it into place and do funny things with thread or whatever else. The moment I tie this thing on, it's gonna sit where I want it to sit. You mm. see that? It follows the angle of the wing. Okay. Right, tying it in. I tend to I tend to flatten it a little bit. Couple of fibers trapped. Okay. Did you give okay. these little horns that stick up at the front? You want to get rid of those. Okay. You don't want. You don't want the front horn sticking up that way okay so what does that mean you know for dog all right so I flatten I flatten the tying point a little bit push it up I check that it's straight okay I don't want the tying point to do this kind of thing so I hold it up check that it's straight that's a very nice straight topping Down on top, just on top of the wing. Okay. It's actually a bit too long. It's just a touch too long. You mm. see at the back here? Mm -hmm. So you can either go and cheat and do that kind of thing. You know, push it on the tail and let it sit there and I don't know what else. Or Pull it. take it off and just take that much off the front. Okay? So I know that I have to take it off a bit more. Well, if you worked for House of Hardy, you just cut it. Is that what they did? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they did. A guy goes, he goes, oh, my tail's too long. They probably trim their wings as well. <laughs> no, they didn't actually trim the wings. Right, so a new bend <coughs> in place. A little, bit, a little bit of curve back because it pulled some of the curve out. has to sit right on top of the wing okay so that's kicking up you can see that's mm. kicking up now okay 
So it's because I do not have enough bend in here and I'm getting into the part of the topping now that I don't like getting into. See, now I've got these horns sticking up and all kinds of weird shit going on. That's, that's fine. I think you need to develop the gel for salmon bias. Charlie Shoot's not gonna be happy. <laughs> no, he's not gonna be happy. Okay, not not entirely straight at this point, just gonna pull it straight. There you go. Okay. Boom, Looking thanks for coming. Good, yo. Yo. Now, now what I do not like about this at the moment is I've got I've got this gap. gap there's light between the top of the wing and my top of my topping I don't like that okay so I am gonna take it off and just lessen this angle slightly so you're manipulating the topping to a point where it sits right on top of the wing That's better. Yeah. Still mm. a bit of a gap, but that's better. So, done. Mm, I've still got this gap in the front that I don't like. But I think you get the idea. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So, there's the topping shape of it. I don't like these. I will pull these off. These little, you see these? That's what you want. You don't want mm. that kicking up like that. And it's because I'm getting into the bad part of the top for shaping. I'm way too far from, I'm way too far from that. I, you want to be in this section, not there. That's too far forward already. Okay. All right. So toppings on. stabilized and this is why I prefer to add a bit of varnish to the head and you go tip and you cut close okay Okay, so you see I'm shaping, I'm shaping the head as I'm cutting, okay, mm -hmm. I want an angle at the front, just ever so slightly, okay, there you go, okay, don't worry about all this that's blown out, we will preen that back into place, see my matted roof I have kicked up a little bit, mm -hmm. I'll pick up the topping, I'll add a bit of a spit and we'll get it back into place, so that one kicked out of place a little bit, I'll just put that back, if you've tied it properly, if you've tied it well and your materials are set in the right places, you'll always get them back to where they were. Okay? Um, oh shit. Imaging there, dog. Okay. That's her purpose. All right. So my head is shaped. I'm happy. You can see where this head is going to go. You can mm. see what it will look like. Yeah, like. Okay. The head is shaped. It's there. 
adding a couple of horns. So one fiber each side, blue and gold on this. Um, right. Length for me of a horn. Now there's two ways to tie horns again. You can either go that way, so that you see where the yellow band is, hmm. okay, or you can go that way. So yellow on top, yellow, yellow bottom. It, I think it's a personal preference thing. I don't know if there's rules about it or what. Um, I I go this way. That's the way that I put it on. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it. It's a bit busy that way. Okay. But which way do you do it, Gordy? Do you know? I always it fiddle. I always sit. And Let me see how. I it always sit and fiddle with them. I probably do this. See, one. you've got the you've got the natural curvature of the feather, mm -hmm. so you can All right. Length, the tip, you want to uh, be it's in. Not so long. So. Okay. All right. So the length of the horn angle. There's options. You can go like this and bend a little bit. So another option, which I have tied on flies and I like, so there's a way to tie it like that. Or you can go and do that and put it there, mm. for example. Mm. Okay. Um, that's not going to... That's not going to... No, it doesn't. Them. It doesn't, but aesthetically it does look nice. Mm. Okay, right. Sometimes, if your fly is a bit weak on top, and you do that high, a little I've bit of a higher horn, I've done it. A little bit of a higher horn, yeah. it gives you the visual illusion of weight. Yeah. So yeah. it makes your mind think it's heavier on top than it actually yeah. is. I, I, I tied a fly in an, a, an artistic where I had a low front end. But I still wanted that to balance this and there. So what I did is I just added horns that did that. Mm. And it gave me that feel. That I still had the hump at the front. Okay. Um, all right. So those are options. The normal way is about there. I like to end my horns in line with that and in line with the top of my topping. It's a personal thing. Okay. That's what I like. All right. So tying in, um, horns should be fairly easy. Okay, so so you can see I'm not. It, it's it's coming off too low on the wing, and it's pushing up straight. So what I want is actually to bring this. Like that. It's just too short as well. So lengthen it a bit. And I don't want it coming through here. I want it coming. Uh, it's again personal thing, but you, you see how, how, I'm, how I am manipulating it. Right, and then you do the other side to mirror what you've done on that side. Actually, they are wrong way around. I'm going to go with them the other way. I'm going to put that one on the back. Just going to change things up. A little bit. I'm going to do that. That's yellow at the bottom. Mm, now I've got yellow at the bottom. Oh, yeah. 
Boo. Nice thing again. Yeah, into the cross. See how, it's, see how it sticks to your wing. So when you're working with, with your horns, be careful not to pull everything apart. You see how it's sticking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just be careful. Architecture is the main. Decrease. Okay. I don't like the shallow angle. I want to up it a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll push that back a little bit. Come here, Dorn. Come. Yeah. All right, and then a drop of varnish on all of that. Okay. You can see how that when I pulled this horn, it pulled my roof off the off the wing. Mm -hmm. You see that because it sticks. This stuff sticks to everything. Sticks to everything. So what I will do is I'll put a drop of varnish, I'll let it dry, and then I will finish my head and finish off the fly. Okay. Cool. See how it kicked up the roof. Yeah, we want it. Okay. Cut that off. Right, time to finish off and shape the head. Now what I do here. Wax is quite important on this step. If you're gonna tie, if you can tie a a hurl head, even more so. We're not doing hurl heads on these. Carlson doesn't call for one, yeah. so we don't do them yet. <laughs> so you wrap a hurl around the head. Mm. Goodness. Mm. <clears throat> it is. It's one of the last things I managed to get right on these flies. Was to do a proper hurl head. It is very tricky because you've got a steep. Mm. How do you get it to, to wax it on then? Wax. Pluck on. Yeah, you, you wax it. I would love some, thanks. You could sit on my tana for some. So, 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 also toffee. Worse. Complex way. Right, so, and when I say wax, I know, I know when you do trout flies and you, you think I'm that's okay, a lot of wax. I've got it. Okay? Um, I do know that, you know, that's a lot of wax when you're doing ribs or whatever. Oh, not ribs. When you're dubbing. You want a lot more. Okay. Little bits and pieces getting stuck there, don't worry about it. Then, I actually rub a bit of wax on the head as well. Okay. Because you've got st steep slopes and shallow. Yeah. Okay. They can slope. Right, so you can see there's a lot of wax on there. Mm. And there's the shape of the head. You see that? That's yeah, the shape that I want. Ready. The form is there. Okay. So just finish it up. Get my straight angles where I've got them and don't put too much pressure on this. Okay, am I happy with that shape? That's the question. Check out the other side. Yep, that's not a bad head. Okay, I'll actually whip this one on the top. So you can see, I, I, I don't go for small heads. I just mm. don't, because they they add visual balance to the fly at the front. Mm. In my opinion, it's just opinions, okay? So, you don't have to do this tightly. Everything has been tied in, everything is locked down with, um, with varnish. So don't whip finish this into Submission. You shape it with your nail. Black varnish we would get where, or do you just use QD? Craig Tom has it. Celere. Hmm. Can we just use Alternatively, some? you do get black Celere hansels. Oh. 
Okay. <laughs> or just okay. black eye gloss paint. Or that. Or that. <laughs> the, 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 problem, the problem with black varnish, the problem I have with black varnish, it, it, if you do not know, if you do not handle it exceptionally carefully, to get a, a bit of black varnish mm. there or mm. in the roof or is very easy and that spoils a fly immediately. That's why I tend to not use black varnish. I don't like it. So I've shaped the head and you apply liberal. Basically flooding it. You're gonna you're gonna in the end finish off building the head of the fly with the varnish. With, with the varnish. Awesome. But it's, it's mind boggling how that tiny little space got filled up with all of that. It is, isn't it? Yes. So you see, there's no more that that's gone. And your head is in so proportion with your uh, ostrich jaw. Yep. Which also gives vision. And so there's more or less and this is more or less the head shape that I want as well. I probably not as much of a bump at the front, more that way. Right, and that's a done fly. So what you'll do is that you'll let dry overnight, and then tomorrow you'll add another coat and let that dry. Do not be tempted. Do not be tempted to go. To, do not be tempted to go too quickly with the varnish. Okay, wait for it to dry. If when it dries, you'll see that it starts. It forms a few holes and stuff again. You just add another coat and it, take it two or three days. Do it over the, over a few days, but don't be tempted to go too fast with this. Okay. I just want to set this fly so that it's a little bit more robust. That's what I want to do. Okay. Especially if I'm framing, I will do that because I don't want to keep opening a frame to reset a fly. So there's two <coughs> points that I touch with varnish. Two points. The first one is the horns. I get my horns in the proper place exactly like I want them. Okay. So as you can see, they are there by themselves. I'm not gluing them in place. They are there. Okay, and what I will do, and it's the tiniest, tiniest drop. And I'll just touch it on that cross, on that point. Okay, I didn't quite work. I'm not seeing this properly. Okay, so the tiniest, tiniest drop. Yeah. All right, so that drop is on. Okay, so that will now stick. It will not come apart again. Okay, the other place where I put a drop, and I probably will, will be crucified for this at some stage, if people know it. But I do where I have got a touching topping tail. Where I have got that, I will add a small. It, it's so you cannot. If you add too much, you're going to stick the fibers together. It's going to spoil the whole fly. Okay. So you can see my tail topping, it touches, it matches. I don't have to, it, it's there. It's auto, I've tied it in such yeah. a way that it's there. I'm not gluing this thing together. But if you put it in a frame, it holds it better. Okay, so again, the smallest, smallest drop. And what I do is I literally on the back, just touch it. And then... Just make sure that they are connected. Okay, I'm not going to do it on this one now. I'm, I'm, I, I need to sit under my under my light with my with my magnifier. magnifier because it's so small. It's literally one fiber to one fiber. Okay, but don't do that as a cheat to make your fly to finish your fly. Don't do that. 
Right? It's just when I'm framing flies that I do it. Okay, now packing up.